<laughs> Officer Tatum, man, nice to meet you finally in person. Yeah, yeah. man, it's good to meet you both, man. I remember growing up and my mama was really into anything that was about racism. I remember when Roots came out. We was watching Roots. You see that Keep Kim? Look out. Look at the white people. Look what they do to us. They blue-eyed devils. We, we get brainwashed, though. Yeah. You get brainwashed because yeah. it's not even just your parents. Like, my mom and them never just came to me and was like, well, you can't trust them white folks. My mama <laughs> had me paranoid. <laughs> I didn't recognize at the time, but all my black friends, they didn't have a... I had a dad. We had a dad. But they didn't have no father. Yeah. Yeah. All, all my friends that did poorly in life, they didn't have a father. They father with nobody. Right. Selling drugs and, and really not an example. Right. It's too yeah. many single parent homes. We brainwashed by the Democrat. Every all the leaders are emotional. And when somebody else speaks out against the typical black outlook, we're demonized as being sellouts and that we hate being black. It's just that brainwashing. brainwashing. That's why it takes people like us to like get the word out there. A lot of this music nowadays, I think, is replacing like mothers, fathers, especially this rap culture. Yeah. Every rapper on planet Earth, all they do is promote degeneracy. Yeah, you think we could change it? It's like the Titanic. It's sinking. You just gotta try to save as many as you can. Yep, yep. There is people that can be saved. Like yeah, we, right. we all woke up. So it's a possibility that people are waking up from, from like us waking up. Can't save them all though. Can't save, yeah. you, you ain't man, you ain't. Yeah, welcome to episode six. We got a fellow black prominent conservative on the show today. He's a legend among black conservatives. <laughs> He's gonna go down in history <laughs> for being an Uncle Tom. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. Brandon Tatum. How you doing, brother? Hey, before we get to Brandon Tatum, we got to pay the bills. Oh, before we get to him, <laughs> we got to pay the bills. This video is brought to you by Optima Human. Yeah. It's a great drink. It's a all-in-one nutritional drink. It's good for your brain, gut. Yeah, it's going to make your body great again. Yeah, it's a greens supplement. It's got all your fruits and veggies. Yeah. It's good for your gut, your brain. I already told him that, man. Even good for your foreskin if you're a man. Hey, you know what the best thing about this drink? doesn't taste like you took a damn tree and grind it up in your blender and drink it. <laughs> it actually tastes good. Tastes good. Go to OptimalHuman.com. Order yours today. Let's get to Brandon. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Austin Tatum, man, nice to meet you finally in person. Yeah, yeah. man, it's good to meet you both, man. Yeah, man, you got your Trump shirt on. I got my Trump. Yeah, we repping Trump all day, man. Yeah. Mine, mine wrinkles, but uh, yeah, y'all's yeah. look good. Though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, so we black. We all black here. <laughs> yeah. So I want to, like, just um, find about your history when you was growing up. I, we know what it's like for us as being a black man in yeah. America, but how was it like for you? Uh, I guess it was cool. You know, I, I grew up in somewhat of a diverse background. Uh -huh. You know, I, I grew up in some places that would be considered the hood and then some places – uh, we're a little better. You know, my dad was a firefighter, so as he progressed through the ranks, you know, we started to move to better places. Yeah. But I went to high school at Paul Lawrence Dunbar High School right in the middle of Stop 6, which is the hood. Mm -hmm. And so I had the exposure and experience to all of that, man. I lived around white people, lived around nothing but black people. And like I said, when I graduated high school, it was an all-black school yeah. named oh, okay. after the famous black poet Paul Lawrence Dunbar. So, I mean, I got, you know, full experience right. and exposure. And, and I didn't grow up in a with a silver spoon in my mouth either. You know, right. my mom and daddy, were they they never were together. Uh, as far as when I was born, they had broken up already, and they didn't get along at all. Oh, really? You know, oh, yeah. they hated each you other. You remember them fighting? Oh, they, they, I remember my mom and daddy fighting. I don't know, I don't know if I can, I don't know if I can say that. Mom was throwing punches. I don't know. Well, daddy was throwing punches. <laughs> I hope, mama was defending I, hope, I hope she was blocking, God dog. Yeah, mama could run too fast. <laughs> but uh, I remember, and I can say this, man. It's you know, my mama and my stepmama got into a fight. Oh yeah, you know, that was jiggy, man. I mean, my mama came to the front door, and uh, you know, she just kind of popped up, mm -hmm. and my daddy was like, you know, you need to call for you just show up over the house. Oh okay, yeah. My yeah. mama wasn't having that. Yeah, <laughs> she like my kid, them my mother and kids in there, and, yeah, and me yeah. my brother here. We like, oh man, mama here. <laughs> Yeah, your mama sound like my mama. Mama was Christian, but she would cuss your ass out. <laughs> she would cuss you out while holding the Bible in her hand. Crazy. I remember uh, I was in high school bringing up a story about mama, and there was this big fat black chick on the bus, right? And she said she wanted to be my girlfriend, right? I told her, I said, uh, I wasn't interested. <laughs> she slapped the shit out of me. <laughs> I told my mom, right? <laughs> and it pissed my mom off, and it was funny. The same day, well, it was a couple days later after I told my mom, there was the fat black chick walking up the street by a house. <laughs> and my boss said, there she is, mom. <laughs> <laughs> hey, bitch! <laughs> you gonna put your hands on my kids? <laughs> Bring your fat ass up here. <laughs> and, but 
it was crazy that my mama after that she'd be like so polite and so uh religious because every <laughs> weekend we was having Bible study. Yeah. Mama you know? was bipolar though. So was how, how, how was what's the what's the racial makeup of your parents? Both of them black or both of them black. Black, daddy daddy light skin. Was, I look like my dad. Okay. Yeah. I'm yeah. like, how y'all got blue eyes, man? How, yeah. How my, they yeah, like my dad's family. Yeah. They all look like Mexicans. Yeah. <laughs> they were green eyes. They real light skin. My mom, uh, my dad, my grandfather on my mom's side is is dark as it. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. His name he was his name Theodore Roosevelt. They oh, named yeah. him after Republican because he was Republican. So, oh really? Yeah. Really. Yeah, yeah but yeah, mom. We get that question a lot. Like they, they actually wrote a, a book about our family. Really? We come from the Hurston Plantation, the biggest plantation on the East Coast. Yeah. And it's actually got our family in there and our, our great great grandfather. He was from Ireland. Yeah, from Ireland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cheatham was a white dude. He liked <laughs> white girls and black girls. <laughs> <laughs> this white man had a black family and a white family. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of weird, man. But hey, he he believed in diversity. <laughs> yeah. And inclusion. Yeah. 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 But um, but uh, yeah, like I. I us growing up, we was very poor. Really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But just like you, we lived in a black area and we lived in a white area. It was a poor white area, but we got the experience to live with both sides. And I think that's probably helped you a lot to mm-hmm. see things from yeah. both sides. Cause yeah. A lot of black people, a lot of my black friends in school that I grew up with, they're all locked up. Mm. Every last one of them. Every last one of them niggas. <laughs> 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 they're all locked up. Yeah. And you know, I think I have an advantage seeing things from both sides because I'm more fair skinned. They never like. Well, like, you grew up in a white area hey, too. Let, let me finish the thought. Yeah, I'm just saying. <laughs> no, no, it's no, not no, because no. you got fair skin. Like you better <laughs> no, 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 no. Talking no. about see, see, you jump light to skin conclusions. privilege. You jump, you jump to conclusions. Like, like as far as I, as long as I can remember, I've never people never accepted me as being black, mm. even though I am black. Right, right. I'm, I have a- African ancestry. They never accepted me as black because of my skin and my eyes. They never accept that. That's why I think I have an advantage because black people have never really accepted me as being black. So I've I've been put in this position where I'm not black, I'm not white. I'm like, what the hell am I? So I can actually see from two. You can be objective people. about race. Yeah. Okay, you clean that shit up. <laughs> <laughs> my my experience didn't really I didn't really get exposed as much mm-hmm. because even though we lived in like a diverse community, all the yeah. black people hung out together. You know, yeah, we yeah. all play basketball and yeah. sports and we just hung out mm-hmm. each other's house. Mm-hmm. White people went to the school, but we were still kind of segregated. Mm-hmm. Right. It wasn't until I got to college that it opened my mind. Mm-hmm. Because okay. when I was growing up, you know, in Texas, and some people don't consider it the South, but it, to me it's the South. When I growing up in Texas, right. yeah. th- there was a lot of uh I wouldn't say division, but people were separated, man. White people hung out with white people, black people yeah. hung out with black people. We would mix every now and again, but mm-hmm. your, your homeboys would be yep. whatever race you are. Mm-hmm. But when I got to college, man, where I was the minority mm-hmm. by far right. and got exposed to all these different people from all over the country right. and mostly white, it was just an eye-opening experience for me. Yeah, And I started to realize that they had been lying to me this whole time. You know, growing yeah. up thinking that mm-hmm. all, you know, the, the country's against you, mm-hmm. white folks out here trying to hold you down, you gotta work twice as hard. But then when you got when I got actually exposed to it in real life, it was like, man, white people ain't even thinking about me. Yeah. We think yeah. about them way more than they think about us. You know, yeah. so I think black people suffer from social anxiety. They see something that's not there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they see, oh man, it's a white person. Oh, I know what he's thinking. Yeah. What why's this Negro over here? You know? <laughs> We we get brainwashed though. You yeah, get yeah, brainwashed because yeah. it's not even just your parents. Like my mom and them never just came to me was like, "Man, you can't trust them white folks." I can't say that about my grandparents. <laughs> but... my, my mama had me paranoid. Because <laughs> <laughs> bro, my yeah. great my grandmother, she was you know alive during the time where you had to drink out of segregated water yeah, fountains, Jim Crow, Jim Crow, and go yeah. to the back back of restaurants mm-hmm. and stuff. So I understand the bitterness and kind of like the apprehensiveness. Yeah, the trauma of that, yeah. Yeah, so I understand that from like my grandma my great-grandma. Mm-hmm. But like my parents really didn't push that, but the culture did. Yeah. You go to school, bro, you think you're going to date a white girl, mm-hmm. you in for something else, bro. You get bullied. They, you, you trying to be white. <laughs> yeah. I, I lost my virginity to a white girl. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, that shit was I remember, you remember it. Was I was in the room. It was over. It was over in ten seconds. I can see the flame. But he's like, oh! I still remember, man. We was in a room together. We met these two girls. I had a white girl. I said, man, I got a white, I got a white girl in the bed with me. I remember the the song that was on radio was uh, "Gin and Juice" by Snoop Dogg. Oh my god! I lost my gangster. That song. A gangster. <laughs> 
You ain't, you ain't encourage him a little bit? You give him a pep talk? Like, come on, bro. <laughs> but I was you over can't do some... five minutes, man. <laughs> I was over there with a fat chick. <laughs> I think what was, she was black. No, she was cute. You talking about that other no, girl. No, but when I took, I hate to get off stuff, but when I lift up the sheet, she had like a hot dog frame. <laughs> <laughs> she had rolls for days. She wasn't bad like that, white. <laughs> yeah, we just get way to Ford F-350 to Brent from Texas. You just drove out here. A happy white man. Man, that makes you feel good, don't it? Don't it giving back. Bringing joy to white folks. <laughs> hey, but right now, we only got two weeks left in our current F-250 contest. Hey, and if you enter today, you get 10 times the interest. You spend 100 bucks, you get 1,000 interest. We can wear this F-250. Look at the color on this truck. Look at the tires. Look at the wheels. If you enter today, not only get in to win this truck, but look at that beauty over there. Somebody's gonna win this 2024. Yeah. Jeep Wrangler Rubicon. 18 inch frame. How big them tires? Them tires, 37 inches. You can't beat that you got the Mickey Thompson tires. Yeah. And got the Fox Performance Racing Shots. That's that good. sounds like a damn good deal. <laughs> Go to officialharshtwins.com. Anything you buy on the site, get you automatically in that truck, this Wrangler over here. They get 10 times the interest, right? And you get 10 times the interest. When you win the truck, Get ten thousand dollars in cash. Don't get no better than that. Don't Ain't nobody doing it like us. Yeah. This is fake, by the way. The white people wouldn't give me the real. Shit. This is <laughs> racism. Go to fishhogstores.com. Anything you buy from the site, get you automatically. You're in it to win. Yeah. No purchase necessary. Boardwalk prohibited. See official rules for details. Yeah. But anyway, I, uh, <laughs> I want to ask you, um, have you always been Republican? What was your red pill moment for you? Yeah, no, nah, man. Like I said, I mm -hmm. grew up believing I was Democrat, but I wasn't really into politics like that. Yeah. Right. Never That's voted. Same thing You know, you here. see stuff on TV, and you, and, yeah. and then in the background, it's just like uh, the Republicans are racist white folks, and the mm -hmm. Democrats are for the people. Yeah. It wasn't until Barack Obama's second term. Like, I got into politics a little bit with Barack Obama's first term. Mm -hmm. Because, of course, the first black president. Yeah, everybody that, was, was, that was great. And, and dude, yeah. I, I ain't going to lie. Like, I teared up a yeah, little I bit. Did. And then the did. ceremony. Right. I'm like, mm -hmm. dang, we finally made it as a country. We got a yeah, black right. man. Yeah. Seeing Michelle and the kids there. I'm like, mm -hmm. man, like, yeah. it, it's real. You mean Michael, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I wonder, I, I wonder, it, it, do y'all really think that's a dude? Man, if it is, that's to be the first dude I bang. <laughs> <laughs> I still hit. <laughs> Might even give up reach around. <laughs> two jokes. Oh, my God. Joking. Yeah, that when Barack came president, yeah. I was like, man, that was special. I was like, man, our country came a long way. We have a that. black president. My mom grew up in Virginia, Jim Crow South and all that. So yeah. my mom made my mom happy. I was happy. Yeah. yeah. But, man, I can honestly say. When he became president, our country went. Oh, it went off the rails. Yeah, yeah. It got way worse. I yeah, thought yeah. I thought he was gonna be the pivotal point in our yeah, country exactly. where everybody yeah. just come together now. Yeah. If you a racist, you yeah. can't be there. You know, you got the black president now. You gotta yeah. accept this. Yeah. Oh man, it was it was worse. So, but I wasn't there yet. I I, yeah. I saw that, but I was like, mm -hmm. man, I'm not gonna vote for this dude just because he's black. You know, I, I'm trying to be right. reasonable. Uh -huh. uh, his second term. I started to get into politics because I had just gotten a job, a good job with the police department. I was looking uh -huh. at the taxes. Right. You started like, to see how their politics affect that, that I gotta mm -hmm. do, I gotta get involved, man. I'm mm -hmm. 20 something years old. I ain't never voted. Right. I'm a grown man at this point. I need to figure this out. So mm -hmm. I just, you know, I, I I looked at the debates, which I don't suggest anybody do. Just look at the debates. You gotta you gotta look at the platform, mm -hmm. do some research. Mm -hmm. But I just watched the debates between him and Mitt Romney, and I and I thought Mitt Romney was trash. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, Obama makes sense. You know, and you know, he's smooth talking. So he he sounds better than Mitt Romney, especially mm -hmm. a person that's not really into politics. You just kind of, you know, step in your toe in it. Yeah, he's charismatic. Yeah. You're like, mm -hmm. all right, he can just finish a turn. What what, what, right. what what can he do that could be worse than what happened? And then when he got elected, I'll never forget this, man. I'm in the <laughs> briefing uh, when I was a police officer at the time, and everybody on the police department conservative. So they all mad. And, I, and we, we in the briefing watching the TV, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Barack Obama won. And they all just like, I'm the only black dude in there, yeah, too. So you yeah. know how that looks. <laughs> yeah. they, they're like, of course, they, of course this right. dude is. Yeah, right, right. right. So, but after a while, man, you yeah. know, when he was mm -hmm. bashing police, and we started getting confronted by people a lot more, mm -hmm. and, and everybody's like, hey, look at your boy. Look, yeah, at, look, look at, at your, your boy. boy doing. Yeah. And I, I couldn't defend it. And I'm like, yeah. you know what? I can't, I can't stand these Democrats, man. And everybody was kind of piggybacking off of Barack Obama, as trash mm -hmm. as he became to me. Mm -hmm. And I said, man, I can't support none of these dudes. So then I started really looking at the Republican side. You know what? I really think, looking back on it, because I voted for Mitt Romney. Um, 
looking back on this, man, I think I was a little naive what was going on. I was happy that we had a black president, but I really think that that was a setup. Mm-hmm. Look who they put against Barack Obama. Of course he was going to win. Right. Man, and I think they, and and I think they intensely tanked those, those leading up to that president, man, because how else is – I don't understand – Mitt Romney, man, he's like a horrible representation of a Republican. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. He's soft. He he, he mm-hmm. weak minded. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He don't take a stand for nothing. Mm-hmm. But you know, I, I hate to say this, but I'm kind of glad Barack Obama got in instead of him, yeah. because it, it always happens this way. Just like uh, with Joe Biden now, it wake people up, man. It ruins the argument that there's countries systemically racist. Right. But then it wake people up because you see how bad he really is. Yeah. You yeah. see Barack Obama, he got two terms to turn this thing around, and mm-hmm. what he do? He lead a country worse than it was. So now they have yeah. no choice but to rebel against that the Democrat devil, in mm-hmm. my opinion. Yeah. And so they voted for Trump, which was which was extreme. Mm-hmm. And the same thing with with uh, Joe Biden now, man. They they, they had dude. to put him in there because people were taking Trump for granted. And now look at him. And, right. and you know, I think the vote is going to go if they don't, you know, yeah. do their thing. I think the vote <laughs> they is better not vote. do that thing. This I know, dude. I, <laughs> If they do that thing this time, uh, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can't say it on the, I can't on the, say on the podcast. Either, but man, but you, y'all, y'all playing with fire, <laughs> right? right. <laughs> y'all keep playing. <laughs> yeah, I remember the night I watched the election. I said, "Man, I'm going to sleep." Yeah, this, this shit's over. It's just it's like over. the last election. It's, it's over. over. It's over. I didn't see it, man. I've seen a dozen of these elections. You know how they're going? I was like, "Yep, Trump's got this." I woke up, man. I'm, I turn on the TV and say, "I'm gonna look at these liberals losing their mind." Right? <laughs> I look out and say, "What <laughs> the hell is going on?" Yeah. They showed a graph where yeah. uh, Trump was like this, right? The vote. Biden was underneath like this, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah that shit said, "Boom!" <laughs> <laughs> it went right over. Like and, this. They, and they claimed there was mail in ballots. I say, "I understand it's mail in ballots, but how did they all go to Biden?" Right. That mm. don't make no sense. It's, it looks like. Yeah. 99.9% of the ballots went towards Biden. Right. Just enough, though. It, it's, yeah. it wasn't even like it just yeah. did like this. And it was like, yeah. I mean, right. it was like it was like Trump was up here. It just went boop, right over him yeah. and then kept going yeah. like that. Hey, Tatum, that was the best comeback in history. Uh, be, uh, the best you, you will ever see ever. It's <laughs> impossible. The impossible. They're going to write about this shit in history. <laughs> <You're right, right. laughs> the greatest comeback <laughs> in election history. Only in the swing states. Too. Right. Yeah, I mean, only in the swing states. And you know what's crazy, amazing about that election? He won less counties, jurisdictions. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. still won. It has never in the history of this country, no right. no president has ever won that many bellwether counties like Trump did. I mean, yeah. he won all but one mm-hmm. and didn't win an election. Yeah. All of the swing states that Trump won, there's no president in history that mm-hmm. won those particular states and didn't win the presidency. Right. There has never been a never. time in American history where yeah. a president that's running for re-election got millions more yeah. votes and didn't win. Yeah. Barack Obama got millions less and he still right. won. Yeah. Yeah. And Biden got the most votes in history and didn't even campaign. Right. <laughs> Not one time. Bro, and then you uh, see the one he tried to, they in these little, what they had, the yeah, hula hoops. drive-in. Let me have the yeah, drive-in. Yeah. It's like a little drive-through <laughs> with 15 people out there. Yeah. High, high in the, he the most popular president yeah. by like 20 million votes or something yeah. crazy. And supposedly Trump is the most hated, but everywhere he go, he gets cheers. Everywhere Biden goes, he gets booze. I ain't never seen a Biden shirt. I ain't never seen nobody wearing Biden merch. Yeah. I ain't never seen it, to no be problem. honest. I've probably no seen slogans. one bumper sticker. Yeah, he ain't got no slogan. No swag, no nothing, bro. <laughs> he ain't got nothing. This dude falling <laughs> and stuttering everywhere he go. Dude's yeah. a walking meme. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, I want to talk to you about um, the culture within our community. Mm, yeah. um, it's broken. It's like yeah. there's no other demographic in this country that votes over 90% for one political party. Right. And it's, all it is is culture. Yeah. And I just think there's no objectivity. And that, that statistic proves it. How can 90% of people vote for one party? And it's not, you're not free thinkers. It, it just defies logic how yeah, everybody it, votes it, that way. You know, they say black people aren't a monolith. They're not monolithic in their thought. <laughs> Shit. Well, wait a minute. I mean, they're not completely monolithic. <laughs> but 90 plus percent one yeah. direction is yeah. brainwashing, ignorance, and I, I don't know what else to call it. I, I don't know why, why we keep voting for the same folks. Yeah. Even the people I see on TV, man, yeah. they still, yeah. to, to no end, Trump is a racist, the Democrats are this. And I'm like, dang, y'all don't look at history? Right. See, the laymen, the regular people that's just going about their life, man, they're just yeah. trying to make ends meet. Right. They may not understand that Democrats have been a party of the Ku Klux Klan and yeah. slavery and racism and all right. that stuff. They, I get it. But you talking about the people that graduate from Harvard, people on television, they have producers yeah. that that do research for them. They still believe that 
Democrats are the party for the black people? Well, it's well, insane. Yeah. Um, Democrats have did a great job. They got this infrastructure over the black community. It's in our music, our TV shows, mm -hmm. in the colleges and universities. They have first dibs on the black person in this country, mm -hmm. and they have the most influence on them. Like, we, we are, we're, not, we're not embraced at all. Yeah. And when somebody else speaks out against the typical black uh, outlook, we're demonized as being sellouts and that we hate being black. We want to be white. Yeah. Why don't you think, what do you think, how do you think we're going to get our culture to turn around and like open our eyes and see I know that how. they're being used for power? White people need to take that country back. <laughs> 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 the great white hope. Yeah, we need the great white hope, Trump. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, think, I, think two, I think two things are afoot, I guess, that could occur. Mm -hmm. One is that it's, it's never coming back. It's over. It's over. Mm -hmm. Y'all see in Atlanta? They open up six flags right outside Atlanta. They in there thugging and shooting and We got the video. <laughs> and, then, and, and, and then the White House. I don't yeah, know if y'all yeah. saw. It wasn't the White House, but it was supposed to be the vice president's house. Mm -hmm. They had like a little celebration. They in there twerking, bro. These are HBCU, the elite blacks. They in there right. rapping uh, uh, sexy red. Yeah. And, and so... It, The thing is, how, how, how we how we break in the Six Flags, right? And then we end up fighting each other. How, how did that? Y'all in there? Y'all should be looting and doing whatever. Y'all yeah. end up fighting, and then there's some. It was some shooting going on. People yeah. shooting. Yeah. Out. yeah. So the side of it is that it, we ain't never coming back. It's too yeah. many single parent homes. We brainwashed by the Democrat. Every all the leaders are emotional. Right. They, yeah. They're just easily the easy targets. You give yeah. them a little something. Reparations now. You give black people money. Right. You can give every black person a thousand dollars. That'd be like a trillion some dollars in the debt yeah. for mm -hmm. the country. We can't afford that. But people Painful. will take it. They'll take it and be, oh look at Obama. I mean uh, Biden did this for me. Yeah. But then the other side of it is that. <laughs> <laughs> Just playing videos while we talk. <laughs> That's crazy. Now look, yeah. White people listen to rap music too. Yeah. Right. Yeah. right. Show me a video where little white kids in there twerking. Yeah, right. If they you know, ain't gonna see it, yeah, they know see, what you gonna see. Mom and daddy turn right. that radio off. Turn it yeah. on. Cause y'all can hear it, cause yeah. the beat good, but y'all are not gonna embody that. Yeah. The difference yeah. is black people embody it. So the second thing is that black people can turn it around. And what's gonna have to have to happen is that slowly, methodically over time, mm -hmm. people are gonna start waking up, right? Because the policies are are just detrimental to the black community in Chacago and places mm -hmm. like that. You see black leaders coming out, or some of them, you know, not the not the ones that are race hustling, mm -hmm. but you see people in the community coming out and saying, "Look, these illegal aliens, they, we can't do this. It ain't right. Look what y'all doing in our schools." Mm -hmm. I think over time, because we see the pendulum swinging for black men. The right. women got a long way to go. Yeah. They still emotionally getting caught up in the churches and mm -hmm. letting these fake black pastors preach to them, li preach lies to them. Mm -hmm. But the men are going from like 5% over, all the way to like 16% That's great. for Republicans. Yeah. Um, so who knows what the real turnout is going to be in this election. Right. So if we could start seeing it over time, maybe in the next 15 years mm -hmm. after illegal aliens come into the country and take over all the black communities and they become the minority minority and not the majority right. minority. Taking their schools, taking their facilities. And people may people may turn it around, man. But but to be honest, I hate to say this, man, because I went to a black school uh, to speak at. It was a high school mm -hmm. in South Carolina. Mm -hmm. uh, I know it was North Carolina. I was in North Carolina. And I felt bad because I be talking so much trash about black people. I know. I feel and like I, a white supremacist. Right, right. Man, I went up in there and it felt like, dang, there's really there's really some good black people out here. The yeah, school was right. great school. Kids right. were great. I mean, right. they, they gave me a little problem, right? Right, <laughs> right. I go to the white school. They didn't and do I, you like Cam Newton did it. They, no, they <laughs> didn't. No, 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 no. He, he held his own, though. I got to give him a problem. Yeah. yeah. But, like, they didn't do me like. You know, they didn't do me that bad, but you know, they they weren't really paying attention. They rolling their eyes, they mm -hmm. they talking, and, and, and you know, I don't experience that at other schools. But mm -hmm. overall, they they did a good job. Mm -hmm. But I just <clears throat> I felt bad. But I have to say, I lean more towards believing that it's over. Mm -hmm. It's over, bro. It's just the reality. Yeah. It's over. There ain't no recovering that. It's yeah. 2024, and yeah. they they looting and stealing and killing and shooting, and yeah. nobody's holding them. Nobody's what? trying to hold them accountable. Like uh. Like black rap music, right? It's always been guys. That's really destroyed 
the black man in this country. But now I see these black ghetto ass <laughs> females thought, coming out. Thought and rappers. What, yeah. yeah. And thought they're rappers. gonna they're gonna like black women are doing bad now. This mindset is gonna infect these women, our kid, the young girls. Mm -hmm. It's gonna destroy the black community. Mm -hmm. If yeah. anything's left, it's gonna completely annihilate a whole it's, community. There's really is not much left to destroy. Like <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're doing it to ourselves. That's what right, I call right. white supremacy right, right now. Right. When you didn't train black people's to a certain extent, what it is destroy themselves. Like you, t I want to touch on what you said earlier. You said it's ignorance. At this point, I don't even really think you can call it ignorance anymore because you have all. It's the year twenty twenty four. You got all this technology at our hands. Information's at, at your fingertips, and black people are still this ignorant. I yeah. think it's stupid. <laughs> it, it's a little bit of that. I, I just try to remember. <clears throat> I try to remember back to when I was young. Yeah. I wasn't even in the politics. Yeah. I'm yeah. in the football and yeah. track and field, and I, right. I'm in the sports. I don't even know what's really going on over right. there. Right. All you get is these nuggets, you know, yeah. where they uh -huh. talk about all oh, the white man this, the white man that, and yeah. you start to see through these lenses. Yeah. Right? You get pulled up. I, I remember saying this as sure as the noonday sun. <clears throat> I get pulled over by the police like three times when I was in high school. Now, I deserve every single one of them. Me and right. my brother was on the freeway at like 11 o'clock at night. Out there being a nigga. Doing that. <laughs> we, we on the freeway like this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And they pulled us over. Of course right. they pulled they us pull over. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But it was another time I was I was playing my music real loud. Man, I had it blaring. I had the top down. Yeah. I had a Mustang. I used to do that all the time. Blaring, bro. Just, yeah. just yeah. I had an afro. <laughs> right. cop, cop pulled me over. Right. And I was not, of course, I wasn't dumb because yeah. if I get crazy, I got to see my daddy. Yeah. And if I didn't have no daddy, I'd probably be crazy. Yeah. yeah. But I was like, let me, I'm gonna be respectful because this dude tell my dad it's on. Yeah. So he pulled me over and he gave me a ticket or whatever. No, he didn't give me a ticket, but he told me, oh, a nice car, man. You know, mm -hmm. I'll be listening to my music too if I had a car like you. Right. And he, right. he was being nice, man, in cool. reality. Yeah. Right. But right. I was like, see, now, nah, see the white man when right. she had a car like me. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. And I'm like, and it, it, it's just that lens you look through, bro. Like yeah. anytime a white person do something, yeah. it's automatically racist. Right. Yeah. We got a damn good episode going on. Hey, before we get to that, hey, over 94% of y'all are watching, but you ain't subscribed. What kind of bullshit is that? <laughs> Did you forget? We got a lot of damn good shows coming. Yeah. I mean, famous people. Yeah. I'm not having a bunch of plumbers and. <laughs> Got some real people coming. Well, they real too, but no, they, ain't. they ain't famous. I got famous people coming on. <laughs> Make sure you subscribe. Hit the bell for notifications so y'all get notified whenever we got a damn new show coming. Well, these people, they got brains. They know how to subscribe. And Well, the white producers are telling us to say that shit. <laughs> I got a funny story I'd like to share. <laughs> me and Keith was in a car with our friend. They gonna say his name. Yeah, let me tell the story. <laughs> let me tell it. Let me tell the story. He a black guy, <laughs> right? So it's the it's like it was like one in the morning. It was dark, right? Mm -hmm. We was out driving. Yeah. And then uh, we seen the cops. Was coming from a comedy show. Is this recent? Yeah, it's uh within the last couple of years. About three years yeah. ago. Yeah. yeah. Right. We was leaving the comedy show, and um, we driving home, right? And then we see a cop park, and then we go by. My friend's driving, and he's like. We drive by the cop. He said, look, see? See how they do us? They saw us. Yeah, look, right? look, look, he's turning around. <laughs> right? So the cop pulls us over. Right? <laughs> Me and Kev was like, dude, just, just, just calm down. Just calm down. Just, just hit the man. With, see what he got to say. Right? <laughs> so the white man comes up to the car. He said, wow, I almost didn't see you. <laughs> so my, my friend, the black guy, he's like, Oh, this racist mother? <laughs> He's throwing jokes? <laughs> he said, hey, look, cut your headlights on. You're going to get yourself killed out here. Yeah. Wow. We was driving without no headlights. One o'clock in the morning. And he didn't write us a ticket. He said, just let us go. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. And, you know. This I didn't even say nothing to Mark. Just like. <laughs> he tried, to, he, he tried he, to go there. He was just he, like this. Because <laughs> he felt stupid. He's quiet as hell. <laughs> he should, doggone yeah. it. Yeah. But, but, you know, in policing. <clears throat> See, this is what I learned when I became a police officer, that the times that they let you go, yeah. if they really was racist, they gave you a ticket. Mm -hmm. And in policing, if you're driving without headlights on, mm -hmm. especially that time of night, 80% yeah. chance that you're a drunk driver. Right. Mm -hmm. And so a cop can make an example out of it. They can write you the ticket. It is illegal to drive without headlights. Mm -hmm. right. You could have caused a traffic accident. Mm -hmm. He could have tried to do field sobriety and, mm -hmm. and see if the guy is drunk or not. He, he right. could have possibly used that as you know reasonable suspicion to to believe that the person well, could be yeah. impaired, mm -hmm. but he didn't. Mm -hmm. And so, but people may not understand that. So they may let him off. I mean, you know, the cop lets you off and it's like, oh, he still, he still turned around because he saw a bunch of black people. Mm -hmm. right. And it's like, to be honest, it, it has nothing to do with that. Yeah. Right. Uh, I, 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 I had a girl, she liked me, 
Big ugly. I mean, she. Uh, let me not talk about it. <laughs> she was. She That's was usually the best kind. She was, <laughs> she was big and and unattractive, right? Yeah. But she's a black lady, and, and we used to drop our kids off at the same daycare. And I used to okay. show up in uniform because I had to go straight to work. Right. Oh, so you know, she, she saw you in that uniform. She eyed me in the uniform, <laughs> and uh, but she she was trying to hit on me, so uh, she hmm. said, "Oh, you know," she was saying something. I said, "You should come do a ride along." Now she was doing on that Black Lives Matter stuff. That's why I said, "Come do a ride along." I don't want nothing oh, to do with okay. her. Yeah. But she was kind of like talking about, oh, what it's like being a cop and being black and all this. I said, look, come do a ride along. I'm, I'm going to show her something. Mm -hmm. We get in the car and, I, and I'm driving in the daytime and I'm like, what race is that person in front of me? She can't, you can't, you can't tell. Mm -hmm. People think you can because mm -hmm. they're self-conscious on the inside. That's a great you can't, perspective. You yeah. can't see the race of a person. I mean, if you guys lead the day, you mm -hmm. probably believe me, but if you lead the day, give it a try. You're driving down the street behind tell. a car mm -hmm. and tell me what race the person is in front of you, even without 10. It's really not that obvious. You can't really tell. You actually have to be in front of them and you have to be like eyeballing the person driving by right. for mm -hmm. you to see it. And, and, and it, it was an eye-open experience for her. And she was too afraid to get out the car on a traffic stop. <laughs> We, I, I was doing a, like a public assist. It was somebody that needs some help on the side of the road. Right, I yeah. stopped. She got the vest on. She got the little yeah. observer's vest on. Mm -hmm. She wouldn't get out the car. No, she was terrified. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you better not say nothing else about police. <laughs> right. You can't. You you. Are, it's daytime. Yeah. Imagine doing this at night. Yeah. You know, so I, it was an eye-opening experience. And I hope that more people would see or maybe do a ride along and see that cops ain't doing it the way they, you know, portray in the media. The left ain't trying to do that. They, no, they, they got the whole world figured out. They ain't trying to see <laughs> Black that. women ain't trying to do that either. <laughs> they, they got everything figured out. And that's why I think, um, like, just the Democrat voter in general is just so lost. Yeah, like, yeah. We, we just saw this video with Taraji P. Henson. We got that video? Yeah, it's just like the, the typical. The stupidity amongst black liberal women, man, and brainwashing people that look up to them, especially yeah. these, they're, they're stars. People listen to them. Well, well that's see, what I say. Yeah. That's an infrastructure built to, like, just keep mm -hmm. the black people. Yeah, y'all y'all got that video, of Taraji? Yeah, this is crazy. You know why black people run away when we laugh? <laughs> because we weren't allowed to laugh on those plantations. This is <laughs> stuff that lives in us, y'all. Crazy. <laughs> this ain't nothing new, y'all. That's why y'all going, oh, what? Yeah, it lives in us. That doesn't just go away <laughs> like she said. It's crazy. And if we don't start unpacking it seriously, it will also be the end of us. <laughs> <laughs> what slaves experienced on the plantation is passed down onto your genetically. No, nah, they jumped, bro. <laughs> they jumped over all these free black people yeah. right, to to go back to slavery. I, yeah. I don't understand. Like when yeah. you talk about the people, Madam C.J. Walker, and some of these people who were highly successful after slavery, uh -huh. uh, mm -hmm. Frederick Douglass. I mean, you go down the list: Booker T. Washington, mm -hmm. all these men and women who were highly successful. Mm -hmm. After slavery, built stuff. The Black Harlem in Tulsa. Mm -hmm. You got, uh, um, um, I forget the, the Renaissance, the Harlem Renaissance. Mm -hmm. You go down the list of all this black success. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know that when Rosa Parks sat in the back of the bus, or when mm -hmm. she refused to sit in the back of the bus, mm -hmm. that the black people had a bus line already. They were... They were doing the same thing that Black Matter, Black Lives Matter is doing today. They would stage these controversial situations to mm -hmm. get an agenda passed. I didn't know black people already had their own bus. I didn't know that either. Here's another thing. They wanted a white bus today. It's better. Right. <laughs> Just like you, you can see them, they talk yeah. about it when they integrated schools. I, I forget the young lady. I, I should be ashamed of myself. It, it's the, the young girl that was escorted by the National Guard to school in, right, in, in, in oh, Little Rock. It, yeah. Little Rock. Yeah, don't feel bad, I forget too. Yeah, yeah, I forget too. I can, <laughs> now I got Google, I can look it up. Yeah. Yeah. But um, the young girl in Little Rock, so she's a grown woman now, she gave her testimony how she used to be at a black school mm -hmm. and then she was suggested to go in the integrated school. She, they had black schools and black teachers that could teach black curriculum. Right. But instead, they were trying to go to white schools mm -hmm. and integrate in white schools, and then they mad because their history is not replicated. So, it, you know, these things to me, and even Harriet Tubman, people, mm -hmm. people never I, – I just – I took Africana studies in college, and I didn't notice until more recently. Mm -hmm. I did not know Harriet Tubman was married. Did you know she was married? Mm -mm. Did you know her husband? Somebody actually married her? <laughs> <laughs> the pictures I saw her, she was so up. <laughs> she looked crazy in those pictures. So she was married. Uh -huh. um, people think she was out on the plantation, get beat over the head, and then one night she just snuck out. Mm -hmm. That's not what happened. She was married to a black man mm -hmm. who was free. He was a free man. They lived together. What? Yes, they lived together. You can look it up. Do the research. It was a, it was, she, uh, her husband was free. She had a job. Now... Her husband did not, you know, um, did not agree with her to start the Underground Railroad. Mm -hmm. 
So she decided to do it anyway. Thank God she did. I thought it was an honorable thing to do. Mm -hmm. right. But they don't tell the story about her her real life. They right. don't talk about the fact that the first black uh, slave owner in American history, legal slave owner, was Anthony Johnson, a black man. Right. They don't talk about the fact that hundreds of black um, men own black slaves. Right. They also don't talk about the fact that in the past, voting was based on property ownership or land ownership. Right. And a lot of black people own land and some white people didn't. And right. so black people could vote when white people couldn't. Yeah. And then, of course, they removed the rights for blacks to vote and then gave it back. So mm -hmm. people like this idiot mm -hmm. that act like she know what happened on a plantation. They couldn't yeah. laugh on a plant. So they act like, like she know, like she was there. <laughs> right. They laugh and they go, I didn't whoop them. You can't be laughing when you weren't. <laughs> that, 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 I don't know if that happened like that. And there was different yeah. slaves, man. Yeah. Everybody wasn't out on a the plantation. There was the house Negro. Yeah. Then there were slaves that were like uh, um, servants. They were driving, uh -huh. they were chauffeurs. They would drive around and do things like that. Mm -hmm. Some, I mean, of course, slavery was a horrible thing. Right. Right. And there were slave owners that abused their slaves. Right. Right. But there were some that didn't abuse their slaves because right. they needed them to work. They went out and auctioned mm -hmm. and paid all that money for them. They ain't just beat them. They can't work. Yeah. Right. So there was, was a plethora of different experiences that occurred. But this idiot... Probably making a ton of money. Yes, yeah. It talking about it. Well, lives she claiming us. she don't make enough money because she's black. These these people. This is what's wrong with this is what's wrong yeah. with black people. Yeah, I know. One two things. One is unforgiveness. Because mm -hmm. I'm a big believer in forgiving people. And the black community has never forgiven white people from slavery. Yeah. Yeah. They still hold on that white people that moved on. Everybody right. else that moved. Mexican will moved on. Chinese people that moved on. Right. Jews that moved on. Right. Black people still holding on to that. Only gotta, people talking about it is, only is, is black people. Only people still complaining. We we live in the greatest country on planet Earth, bro. You can't yeah. look at us, man. We yeah, we yeah. black and we successful. Yeah. You can do anything you want if you put your mind to right. it, and everything ain't gonna work. Everybody ain't gonna be a billionaire. Yeah, I think life is based on relationships. Right. That's the biggest thing about life, man. If you got if you can build relationships, you can have a successful life. Without relationships, you can't do anything. I don't I don't care what you know. That's why we became so successful with relationships. And you gotta have a work ethic. You right. gotta have an objective perception of the world too. <laughs> right. right. You looking right. through a racist lens, you are screwed. Cause I li I did I live like that. Cause yeah. we voted Democrat. I voted for Al Gore. Mm -hmm. Voted for Clinton. I remember standing in line voting for Al Gore. I was waiting like two hours because mm -hmm. I thought Bush was racist. Yeah. <laughs> That's the only reason why I was voting. Yeah. <laughs> That's the only reason. Yeah. And I remember we got there, right? <laughs> they say you got an ID. See, so, yeah. See, he asked for ID. Cause I'm black. <laughs> <laughs> he knows who I'm voting for. He, he knows who I'm voting for. Yeah. I don't blame him now, looking back on it. <laughs> but, <laughs> but see, I don't think that y'all crazy or stupid or ignorant for doing yeah. it. It's just that brainwashing. Just brainwashing. That's why it takes people like us to like get the word out there, even with a comedic relief, you know, to get people mm -hmm. in tune. Because I used to follow y'all before y'all were oh, political. Fit, yeah. When y'all were doing the fitness stuff, <laughs> yeah. talking about suck, she like to suck me off. <laughs> I'm trying to get sucked off. You got sucked off. I'm, I'm going to leave them nuts hanging out. I remember before my mama passed away. Keith and Kevin, y'all stop all that damn cussing on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you got your uncles, your cousins, everybody watching y'all. And that then you know what's crazy? My sister's pastor was licking us. Oh, my yeah. goodness. I felt, when I walked into that black church, I felt so uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like I had a pitchfork. Well, he made me feel good because he's like, I love you guys. Yeah. That's yeah. what the pastor said. Yeah. Right, right. Right. That's funny though. But yeah, but you know, we, the progression will happen if it, people stay consistent and open minded. Unfortunately, yeah. it's just the trauma. Like you say, yeah. that woman, she say, um, slavery is passed down with us, or whatever the case may be, or it's in us. No, it's, it, these dumb people keep passing it yeah, down. To other that's people, why. Yeah. Which is which is the problem for the next generation. Her children and the children of those people, they don't have a chance. They don't. You because racism is taught, man. When you're young, man, you don't care who you play with. You know, my kids don't. out there, my kids out there playing with everybody. It's learned. They, uh, they yeah, they teach them and you learn, and the kids learn that and they become their focal point. They become their reality. Right. And and it's hard to shake that until you get older and you begin to get life experience. You start working on jobs, you start getting exposed to other people. Right. Like I I was racist, I was racist against white people when I was growing up. Mm -hmm. Until I got the college. I was too. Because I, I thought I they were all, you know, mm -hmm. hate black people. And mm -hmm. I started thinking about slavery. I, I'd never forget this. When I took Africana Studies in college, we had to take, uh, what was it? Uh, um, it was Africana Studies 101. Uh -huh. We started talking, it was the introduction to, to lynching. Mm -hmm. And bro, I was hot. Yeah. One, black girl, one white girl in the class. 
Yeah. And guess the question she, I didn't know that there was lynching in the country. We, every black person in there was like, hey, no, nah, man. Yeah, yeah. You, you, your privilege that you don't know there was lynching in the country. Right. But um, after that, dude, I was infuriated. I, I hated white people. I, it made me hate white people more. Cause, man, if I asked you, I'd have got her number. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'd have gave her the black experience. <laughs> hey, hey, but that's something you mentioned that. I remember growing up and my mama was really into anything that was about racism. I remember when Roots came out. Mm-hmm. Remember Roots? Yeah. Yeah. We was watching Roots. Yeah. Did you see that? Keep them calm. Look at them. Yeah. Look at the white people. Look what they do to they us. They blue-eyed devils. Look at them. Yeah. That's a devil right there. Yeah. I remember, I remember, and I would go to school after watching that. <laughs> but, but I understand where my mom was coming from because she was traumatized. She yeah. grew up in the Jim Crow South. Yeah. So and I hated white people. Yeah. I liked it to women, though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I couldn't stand. I couldn't stand white people, man. Yeah. And then, but I started getting some white friends. And it was crazy. Like, I had white friends, black friends. Like, White friends, we playing kickball. Yeah. You know, we out there playing Play hot, baseball, got, baseball and stuff, right? <laughs> then I go out. Seek. Yeah, did we? <laughs> Let's go for a merry-go-round, right? <laughs> then I got some black friends, and we just walking the streets. We just walking. <laughs> we just walking. I said, "Where y'all going, man? We just walking. <laughs> we walking, right?" And then we just walking. He say, "Man, let's go hit the store over there." So they walk in, yeah. and all of us. Well, not me. I was just standing there. As soon as we walked in, all the black people scattered like roaches, like somebody turned the light on. <laughs> right? And I was like, what are everybody doing, man? I go around the corner, they just still. Still. <laughs> they still. Right? I was like, hey, man. It's a... then, then they run out. Yeah. And then this, uh, it was a, um, it was an Asian guy that had the store. He was calling us all kinds of. <laughs> 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 you can't blame him. Yeah, yeah. Blame him, right? <laughs> so we go running off of the streets, and they eating all these chips and candy. I say, hey, man, let me get some. He said, man, get your own, man. <laughs> but that was my experience with, like, yeah. my black friends. I remember one day after basketball practice, the point guard of the team robbed me. Gun <laughs> point. Yeah, he put a gun on us. Put God, a gun on us. We was in sixth grade. That's insane. We was yeah. going in to practice. Si- he was a sixth grader? Yeah, we was in like oh, sixth grade. Oh, he we was, was in high middle school. school. Yeah, middle school. Was he yeah. high school or he was in sixth grade? No, he was he in sixth with grade. With a gun. With a right? gun. We going to practice. That's insane. He comes up to us and sticks a gun up to Kevin. Kevin's like, hey, give me some money. man. I ain't got no money. <laughs> <laughs> I'm poor as hell. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, you a fool if you rob me. <laughs> so, but the basketball coach saw it. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. So next day, I'm in the room with at the basketball the, at coach. At the principal's office. Name was Mr. Haley, and then it was this white man. Right there. He said, what happened? That white man was looking at me and said, man, if you say anything, you're probably going to die. <laughs> yeah. really? He had this look on his face. And Mr. Hayes said, go and tell him. It's OK, Kevin. Go ahead and tell him. I said, yeah, uh, that dude Woods, he, he robbed me. Yeah, yeah, he put a gun he, to me. Yeah. They got He got expelled and everything. That's in the sixth but, grade, bro? That was sixth grade. That's insane. Yeah. And I can go on about all my experiences with my white friends. Like, the worst thing I did with my white friends, they took me to a farm and was trying to cow tell yeah. <laughs> black, friends, black friends say, "Look, we are gonna rob the pizza man. <laughs> <laughs> we go. It's a vacant house over there. We go call Domino's over there. When he come down, I'm gonna come up with this back, and we fit to eat. <laughs> I mean, that, that was just commit some felonies. Yeah, right? that was my experience. Yeah. And, and it, same with me, man. I got arrested um, for smoking marijuana in a vacant house when I was how was I eight? Yeah, I think I was eight. Oh yeah, and my brother was ten. Mm-hmm. But then our cousins go all the way up to seventeen. So mm-hmm. it was all of us in there. Mm-hmm. And we were smoking weed. We were smoking weed way back then. I'm talking right. about blunts. We weren't just smoking a little joint. We were, my yeah. cousin rolling blunts. Yeah. And we ended up hanging out with them. My daddy, because they were poor. And my mm-hmm. dad, we were like kind of like the, they called us rich. But, bro, we were like lower middle class at that point. Right. And so my daddy used to give us a little $20 bill so we can eat and we stay with them over the weekend because they ain't right. had no money. Right. right. And so they had a little. Yeah, y'all they, was rich. Yeah. <laughs> $20 for the whole $20. weekend. <laughs> <laughs> and bro, back then the little chicken, the little chicken house, uh-huh. they had the uh, fries this big, whole tray of fried dog. Mm-hmm. Right. And yeah, so yeah, you know we had. Day, I remember buying a loaf of bread for fifty cents. Yeah. We so we had plenty to eat. Mm-hmm. But my cousin used to take the money and go buy weed, right. and then give us a change. And I don't know how much that weed cost. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. You know he he right. come back and give us whatever we he got. He took half your shit. Half of it gone. <laughs> had weed from from last time, and he yeah. just get, took our money. But yeah. you know. That's the experience I had, man. Uh, I think a majority of the reason why we had those experiences with um with our black friends, none of them had fathers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I didn't recognize at the time, yeah. but all my black friends, they didn't have a – I had a dad. We had a dad. Yeah. But they didn't have no father figure mm-hmm. in their life. Yeah. I think that's what – it had to be. Yeah. Yeah, all, all my friends that did poorly in life, yeah. they didn't have a father. Their father was nobody. Mm-hmm. Right. Selling drugs and, and really not an right. example. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, I, I, I tell you the worst – uh, another thing that's that's right on that 
fatherless thing mm -hmm. is the women I dated. Because when I got to college, I, I'll just be honest, bro. When I got, to, well, first of all, <laughs> I was around nothing but black people, right? Yeah. And, and so, especially going to Paul Lawrence Dunbar, everything was Afrocentric to me. I right. never date a white girl. They ugly, flat booty, they can't mm -hmm. dance, they got no swag. Mm -hmm. That's what I thought <laughs> going to college. <laughs> Yeah, right. we, I went to college and it was it blew my socks off. I'm yeah, like, yeah. I don't know what they feeding these girls up here. Yeah, but the but the white girls were fine. Yeah, yeah. Well, without the attitude, without the attitude. <laughs> and, and here's yeah. the thing, bro. Mm -hmm. I end up end up having a kid with a with a girl when I was in college, mm -hmm. and my son, he's 13 now, he a great kid. Mm -hmm. But I, the girls that I dated from the time I started having dates and relationships, all the black girls didn't have a father, bro. The first yeah. girl I dated, and she was. I don't even know if I can say that. I mean, I don't know mm -hmm. if I should say that on this thing. The yeah. first, the first guy I dated, I lost my, I lost my virginity at sixteen. Yeah. This girl was a freak. And I wasn't into it, right? I yeah. was nervous. You know, my he was, brother. He was Christian, bro. <laughs> kind of. Weekend Christian, right? But, yeah. but bro, I was shy. I was yeah. shy, bro. I wasn't trying to. My, my brother was different. He was a different world, bro. He right. all out there. I, I, I yeah. remember one time, bro, I lied. Right. You know, and because I, I was a virgin. You know, in the. I don't know if it's just black community. It's probably all community. Mm -hmm. They encourage you, oh, bro, you a virgin. Like, you gay or something if you a virgin. <laughs> right, right, right. And so I felt the pressure, bro. So I, yeah. I remember lying when I was in the ninth grade, lying to my brother. I'm like, I just picked some random girl that I know they'll never talk to. And I'm like, yeah, right. yeah, she came over the crib, man. I hit that. <laughs> <laughs> and so, but, when, but, when, but when this girl, this situation happened, this girl was like fast, bro. And, and yeah. I'm going to tell you the reason why, and it's very unfortunate. But she was, she was fast, bro. And my brother was dating her older sister. And they left me in the car with her. And my uh -huh. brother went in the house. And this girl took advantage of me. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't, you know, I, I didn't care. I was like, all right, I yeah. got, you know. You took advantage I, of you, huh? I, I, I Made you got, get in a race. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> forced, forced you to get in a race. She, she, <laughs> she caused an erection, all right? Right. Man, Man was, that must have been horrible. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was terrible. I, yeah. I, I still got trauma from that, that, yeah. that experience. We, you, you was at 16? You lost your 16. Weekend? We was damn near 19. Really? Well, that's me, a good thing. Yeah, me and Kevin was not really, really shy. man. Man, why not? If I had a time machine, I'd do so many. <laughs> <laughs> I've been going up to all these white girls. <laughs> I thought these white girls hated me. <laughs> these white girls wanted to kill me. <laughs> was my mom had traumatized me. That's a white devil now. <laughs> yeah. you know? But you know what? Um, a lot of this music nowadays, I think, is replacing like mothers, fathers, especially this rap culture. Yeah, one hundred percent. Because who yeah. you like? Who you like more? Your daddy, yeah. they go to work every day and lame, or a homeboy right. that's a dope boy with all his money and jewelry yeah. and seem popular, famous, yeah. Yeah. got all the women. Exactly. It, I see every kid now, they dress yeah. just like a rapper. Right. The modern day black kid or, or mother, I mean, uh, uh, female growing up, is they're being raised by co rap culture. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And the Beyonce's of the world yeah. and, the, and, and just, and they don't realize. That Jay Z and them can get away with having branches in his head that ugly hair he be right. having because yeah. he worth billions of dollars. Yeah. Beyonce yeah. can get away with looking like a skank on, mm -hmm. on camera because exactly. they got so much money. What mm -hmm. they don't realize that when you broke, you can't be doing stuff like that. Yeah. Can't. You can't just dress like these fools and then go on the job and think they're gonna they're gonna give you opportunity. Yeah. You 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 gotta make yourself. You know, you got to get yourself to a point of being wealthy for you to even be like that. But then also, these people ain't really who they act like they are. Right. You know, uh, Rick Ross used to be a Rick Ross used Just to be marketing. He, Rick Ross used to work at the jail. Yeah, he's a correction officer. He used to be a correction officer. <laughs> How you go from <laughs> boss? You a correction officer? <laughs> when was the drug dealing occurring? I right. just want to know. Yeah. You were grown yeah. in that picture, and now you all of a sudden was a kingpin. Yeah. So, and these dudes, they go live a lavish life. They live in the white neighborhood, in the yeah. gated community with yeah. security mm -hmm. and all this stuff, and they, they still act like they gang banging. Yeah. But the young boys take it and eat it up, mm -hmm. and they really gang banging. And, yeah. and dudes that's really doing it are doing time right now. Yeah. yeah. If you really thugging like that, you doing time. Yeah, yeah we got Yeah. Yeah, we got an important announcement for y'all. A damn important announcement. Show sure do. The value of the American dollar is getting weaker and weaker. And don't believe Biden and his lying media. He's a when, liar. Yeah, when he tell you there's no inflation. Inflation's going crazy. Look, you see it all around you. You got grocery bills, real estate market, gas price, everything's going up. Everything going up. Yeah, it's because the strength of our dollars going down. Just like y'all, we've been trying to find different places put our money, keep it secure, because every day the Fed is printing money. Yeah, like it's non -stop. Like it's Monopoly money. <laughs> and of course, mainstream news outlets. Yeah, they ain't not, gonna talk about it. Yeah, they're not gonna cover it. So we go to Dr. Kurt Elliott for all our economy updates. That's a, a damn good white man. Damn good white That's man. That's a damn
damn good white man. And he's smart too. Yeah, he is. Dr. Kurt Elliott is a precious metals expert and has been working in the gold and silver market for over 20 years. That's, that's a long time. Yes. 20 years? Yeah, that's why we partnered with Dr. Kurt. Go to harshtwinsgold.com. Signing up is totally free, and Dr. Kurt's team of advisors will listen to all your concerns you may have about your economic future and talk you through the right plan that especially fits your needs. Go to harshtwinsgold.com. It's not our goal. <laughs> it's just our website. <laughs> Go to harshtwinsgold.com <laughs> right now and secure your economic future today for you and your family. Man, I wish I had me some gold in my basement. Yeah. yeah you think we could change this? Look, because they already demonize us. Look, bro, you we can change we can change like it's like it's like the Titanic, man. Mm -hmm. It's sinking. Mm -hmm. You just gotta try to save as many as you can. Yep. Yeah. There is people that can be saved. Like yeah, we, we all woke up, bro. And yeah. now we have a platform, millions of people hear content like this. And just imagine right. if y'all didn't wake up, me, Candace, and some other people with yeah. big platforms. Right. So it's a possibility that people are waking up from, mm -hmm. from like us waking up. Can't save them all though. Can't yeah. save you you ain't, man. You mm -hmm. ain't. I, I don't know if, like I said, I think the community harboring unforgiveness, they can't be blessed by God. I just really believe that. Mm -hmm. I think that the turmoil and all the things that are happening to black people, they just, they are not blessed because they hold on to resentment mm -hmm. and unforgiveness. Yeah. And that's what's happening to them. Everybody else that moved on, man, Jewish people. Like I said, everybody else first and still black people. Right. And, and people can't get mad at us and say, y'all just talking about black people. Look at the numbers, bro. Yeah. Uh, the murders in this country, half of the murders in this country. Are they, they, I see statistics Which say over half. Which is crazy because we make up, what, less than 13%? The, the, then you got to break it down further than that. 13% mm -hmm. is everybody. Yeah. Then you gotta say yeah. you go you go half is men, half is women. Right. But then even half of it, let's mm -hmm. just say about six percent, you still got older people in their seventies, mm sixties, -hmm. mm -hmm. and you got little kids. Right. They ain't the ones killing. Mm -hmm. right. It's between sixteen and like thirty two years old that that the killing is happening, which right. is like one percent. One percent of the right. population. A population is that count for fifty percent of the violent crime. Violent crime over half of violent crimes, mm -hmm. ha about half of the murders. Now let's put this in perspective because. The murders that occur throughout the year, I don't know, 12,000 murders, I mean, 300 million people in this country. Mm -hmm. But the, the thing is, is that the violence that is occurring mm -hmm. and the crimes that are committed, and I'll say this, it has to be you know, pointed out, that these are just convictions, right? Mm -hmm. There are half How of all the convictions. Yeah. In, in Chicago, I think they, their um, conviction rate or, or their arrest rate is like 30-some percent. Bro, so most of these crimes and murders don't even get solved. Nobody's right. snitching. They don't know who did it. Mm -hmm. So if they actually arrested everybody who committed the crime, I mean, black people probably make up like 70%. Right. And the reason why I believe it could be 70%, because just look at the news. Mm -hmm. Look at the shooting and the thugging and the killing and the looting and all mm -hmm. this stuff. It's mostly by black people. Right. And so I think the number is a lot higher than what is being represented. These are just arrests that are made, and that's how they qualify them. Right. So, I mean, it's just completely out of control. Look at the abortions. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we're not repopulating. Right. The, the Mexicans and I and I nothing against Mexican people. I don't care. I mean, I, right. I, I think we all the same in my yeah, my, opinion. my we, wife's Mexican. Right. Who, you can't make it, it. It ain't no big deal to me. I think each is own. You know, we yeah. all guys too. You got your own walk of life. They all look good to me. But, <laughs> <laughs> but at the end of the day, man, these yeah. other people are coming over here and they getting theirs and they're yeah. probably. You think they have an abortion? They're they not abortion making excuses. Yeah. No, nah, they got four, five, six kids. About fifteen of them live in a house. Yeah. They they making their way and black people still complaining and killing their babies and having yeah. abortions and and murdering each other going to prison not educated. Let me say this: we can't make yeah. it like that's that. That's why I say it's not ignorance. It's just at yeah. this point, it's stupidity. Let me say this: that's like both our, our wives are from Mexico, right? Yeah, they're, they're, they're American <laughs> citizens now. Yeah, they're American citizens. They legit now. They're legit. <laughs> but it's just a different culture. Black culture is so uh, just so horrible. But like a Mexican culture, like. I go into Mexican neighborhoods, you'll see a 65-year-old man, old man, Mexican guy, Latino, I should say, and he's pushing a cart selling ice cream mm -hmm. at that age. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm having a house built. Who's building it? Who's out there building it? I see nothing but Latinos. Mm -hmm. It's just a different culture. That's why they can come here, not speak the language, and still uh, thrive in this country. And black people don't even realize that. They're at the bottom. Illegal immigrants are doing better than them, mm -hmm. and they don't speak the language. But it's the white man's fault. Right. They don't take no responsibility or accountability for what for what they're doing. And the Africans that come over here, like yeah, people Nigerians. from Africa, yeah. Nigeria, they and do they, better. They come over here because the culture is different. So right. it's not the skin, right? It's the culture. And we also got to understand this: Jewish people were discriminated against, just like black folks. Mm -hmm. You look mm -hmm. at those signs: no they blacks, no Jews. Yeah. <laughs> huh? They own everything. Right. And, and, and yeah. like this is where this is where I feel like this is what makes me mad. Mm -hmm. You say that people get in their feelings. Mm -hmm. It's the truth, right? 
Jews have 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 gotten themselves in a position that black people should be doing. Yeah. Just like Asian people. It was a it was a young lady I met when I first got to Phoenix. Well, I was living I was living in um I was living in Tucson when I left the police department. Mm-hmm. I moved to Anthem. It was this girl at a sushi restaurant. She owned it. Mm-hmm. And I would never forget this. She was telling me, I was like, how you she was 30 something years old. How do you own a sushi restaurant? How do you get all this coordinated? People from Japan, they te- they brought people from Japan. Mm-hmm. But what happened was they have a magazine that they sent out. And they put up their businesses for sale only in their community. Right. So it's not open to the public. Mm-hmm. So she was able to get the magazine. She had a couple family members that were willing to help her. She had people that come from Japan, mm-hmm. and they they built a sushi restaurant called Kawaii Sushi. Mm-hmm. Great sushi, probably the best sushi you're going to eat. Right. But she was able to do that because the community sticks together. I, I, I get, here, one, one more yeah, example yeah. Mm-hmm. of how black people don't do it. Yeah. Yeah. This girl I went to school with, yeah. I, t- I say her name. <laughs> Don't do, don't do it. Don't do it. It's ghetto in a mother, man. Yeah. It's Shakita. ghetto. No, it's worse than that. I don't know how. Aquafina. <laughs> it's worse than that. Yeah. I don't know what her mama thinks. Now, her mama's a great woman. But so black mama. people come with some bad so she, names. She, I don't know what they think. That ain't yeah. how we used to name ourselves. You right. know what I'm saying? But they right. didn't came up with some crazy stuff. Yeah. But she goes, she gets into a traffic accident. Or like her, she was married to a woman. Mm-hmm. They crash in her company car. I don't know how she got paid out. Mm-hmm. She ended up suing the company, even though she was her her. Wife was driving off duty or whatever. Mm. She made millions. Mm. She told me the first thing she did was she went to a strip club and made it rain. 15 racks off the top, off the second story, making it rain. Yeah. But she went to India okay. to get weave okay. straight from India. She got the most authentic weave in the hood. <laughs> she get all this stuff together. She probably spent by two, three hundred thousand because right. she had to fly a whole team there and right. do all this stuff. Oh. Got a business and everything. Right. Came back. Black people wouldn't buy a dime from her. They yep. wouldn't do nothing with her. Yep. And she came me crying. When they're black people, they ain't never support each other. And that's what it is. I said, like I just black said. Black people, we tear each other down. Asian people got magazines. Mm-hmm. Jewish people putting their people on. Mm-hmm. We hating on each other. Right. They'd rather go to the Asian person to buy weave than, than go to that black chick because they they in competition. Exactly. We can't grow like that, bro. I was working at this insurance company, and uh, I had a friend. He was Korean and Chinese, right? He was telling me about his dad and how much money... He said, I really don't have to be here because I can just go work with my dad, but I just want to be independent, right? And then he's saying, when you open up a store in an Asian community, he said, people will flock to your store if it's new just to support that person, Mm -hmm. right? Well, I said here in the black community, if I open up a store in a black community, (laughs) they will go in there and rob (laughs) you just to let me know who I am (laughs) and where I'm at. But yet you remember. You remember. You remember. You're always going to be in there. (laughs) <laughs> and, and, and people probably think, oh, man, look at them. They just saying it. Man, look. This is the truth, man. Look, truth. man. I mean, remember the kid that goes around, uh, I forget his name. He's on TikTok. He goes around mm-hmm. rating restaurants and, mm-hmm. you know, giving people shout outs. I forget his name. Y'all know who he is? Uh-huh. He's like the one of the most viral people on there. Keith, Keith, Sneak Keith, uh, Keith Sneak or something like that. You, you, if you look him up, mm-hmm. he's he's pretty, po- he's the biggest, he's the biggest, like, food critic in, in, the, in America. Oh, really? Okay. So this guy, he, he'll, like, Get his parents to go get the food from the place, mm-hmm. and then he'll do the review in his car. So he's sitting in his right. car to eat it. Oh, okay. Ratings. And like companies blow up overnight, bro, because he'll say that and it's viral. Mm-hmm. He went to like Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, <laughs> the city, dude. They he got death threats after he left Atlanta because he was <laughs> keeping it real. He go, man, I went to the place. They got health inspection issues. <laughs> I told them I can't have shellfish mixed with this, and they said too too bad. Yeah, right. Go somewhere else then. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he. And, and, and like he was, sh- he 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 like quit right. in the middle of exploring certain black because they food was so the service was horrible. Yeah, they weren't following laws. Right, and bro- and then what they do? They didn't say let us do better. You know, they yeah. they threatened his life. Yeah, <laughs> we gonna kill you. He had to leave town. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So that's just kind of stuff. And and I don't know why that's the case, man. Why why do we wake up and want to hurt our own brothers? And yeah. then we go blame the government. You know yeah. how, like, like you know, they go, they, they drop crack cocaine in the community. Even if they did, they <laughs> nah. nobody told you to sell it to your own brother. Yeah. Why no don't you coke. sell it to the yeah. white people? Yeah. yeah. Go yeah. up there. You, they claim they're using it at the same rate. Just go sell it to white folks. Yeah. Right. Why would you sell it to your own brother? Yeah. The, when, when I woke up to this was one day I was, um it was after school. I went to, we used to have this car wash on Ramey, Ramey Avenue. I ain't mm-hmm. never forget, like, Ramey and Style Cup. Mm-hmm. Car wash with all the dope boys there. And then the crackheads, I don't know how they get into these machines, <laughs> but they can take the car wash thing, $5, right. they do your whole car. Yeah. $15, you get a whole detail. Yeah. They didn't stole all the stuff. <laughs> and I remember driving back there, I used to just pay them the $5, I wait out front, they finish it. Mm-hmm. 
I remember going around the back and I saw this guy smoking crack. Mm -hmm. I mean, I saw him bubbling it up, man. And mm -hmm. I, for that point, I said, man, I will never get my car washed here. I can't believe that I'm giving money right. to my own people for that man to smoke crack back there behind that thing. So mm -hmm. I wish that we would wake up to it, but we we break into Six Flags and we start shooting and fighting each other. Yeah, and you know what? Um, when other races see us, you know, in Apple Store doing all this uh, shoplifting and all in California where they have these horrible laws uh, regarding shoplifting, and then you have this Six Flags incident, and you just... Black people don't realize that has a detrimental impact mm -hmm. on every other black person who mm -hmm. decides to do the right thing because mm -hmm. they're going to, like, look at us as those people. Mm -hmm. Just like when a white cop does something that you feel is bad mm -hmm. against a black person. Now you're going to see all white cops like that, right? Mm -hmm. It The shoe, it's going to, you're going to, this same shit goes for you. People are going to see black people this way. And they don't see that. They don't acknowledge mm -hmm. objectivity. And it's just like, Oh, fuck it. <laughs> I don't but you know what? Black it's, people, it's frustrating. of all the demographic of people in this country, man, I mean, of all the groups, I, I, I'm going to say this on camera, we are surrounded by evil. Our pastors, mm -hmm. our, our majority of our fathers, our mothers, it's just, we just got, we just pushing the wrong concepts. We demonizing the wrong things and praising the, the wrong things. It's like, it, I think it, for the most part, it's almost like a lost cause. You can't save everybody. You can yeah. try right. to save some, try to save as many as you can. If but. we could just get 90%, 10% of that 90%, if, if that black vote was 80% for Democrat, it'd be a landslide for Republican. Oh, it'd be a landslide. Yeah. I mean, I think it should be around, if we can get to the numbers like everybody else, Right, we yeah. doing a 60 You're down here for too much. 50-50. You'll you know, never like, see a real, uh, uh, Democrat. They'll election. never win another election, man. And yeah. and they they know it. That's why LBJ said, you know, allegedly said that they're going to have these ends voting for the next yeah. 200 years. And he was right. Because if you get them hooked on the government, and then what they're going to do is they're going to have these illegals voting for another 200 years. Yeah. That's what they're trying to do. they letting these people in mm -hmm. by, in groves because they know they're going to start losing the black vote. Yeah, they ain't done nothing for black people in the last sixty years. Hey, they say they're they replacing up. the white person. They're replacing the Negro. That's what exactly that's what, what they're they doing. doing. You ain't gonna replace the white folks. Yeah, <laughs> because let me tell you how dumb. Let me tell you how dumb these these black folks are in, in this circumstance. Not all. Yeah. We the smart ones. Yeah. They complain about white folks, white supremacy, white supremacy, and all that mm -hmm. stuff, and then they vote for a white man as the president. Yeah. How you how you vote for Joe <laughs> yeah. Biden yeah. as the president, but y'all fighting against white supremacy? And he said, if you don't vote for me, you ain't black. You ain't black. <laughs> and, and, and poor kids are just as good as white kids. <laughs> yeah. You know, how do you vote for that? How, and then look, here's, here's more. He did the if, if Donald Trump did this, they'd be open mm -hmm. arms. Mm -hmm. He did the eulogy for Robert Byrd, who was yeah. a former Klan's member. Right. Now, yeah, yeah, in, all honest, in all fairness, he did lead the Klan. He started his own Klan group, mm -hmm. but he did lead the Klan and denounce yeah. the Klan. But, hey, if Trump did that, they'd be all over his head. Oh, man. Right. Strum Thurmond was a complete racist, Dixiecrat yeah. racist. Right. Uh, um, Joe Biden called Strum Thurmond a mentor of his. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, just imagine if that stuff was on record with Donald Trump. Yeah, they, right. They'll be going crazy. But, but, but we, they're so brainwashed that these white folks can do it right in front of their face. Mm -hmm. They don't even see, listen, Democrats been racist from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. All they did was just change the technique. Right. right. They say, well, we're going to give you something. To me, that's racist because then they hold, they hold the black man down. Oh, we need to give affirmative action. Mm -hmm. That's racist because they mean you're too stupid to do it on your own. So we just going to depend on the government. And then, you, then yeah. we, now you owe us something. Right. Yeah. right. We gave it to you, so we'll take it away. Right. They, they don't structure it where black people have independence and they still trying to do it to us. Yeah. Reparations. You want to throw some money? Or I can't money? believe they fought for the reparations. I, I can't believe it either. Cause who you think gonna pay the reparations? Yeah. <laughs> you. You I was I was black people, <laughs> our ancestors then paid our reparations. Yeah. Let's sit with that one uh black friend of mine, right? Where he was uh the whole cop incident, he thought he was being racist, but whatever. <laughs> we was going over the reparations. He's like, well how much you think every black person should get? He said, man, at least two, three million, man. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. Reparations are supposed to put you on the same level as white people. It don't supposed to make you a damn king. Right. <laughs> right. Bro, so, do you know how much money that'd be? Yeah, that's, yeah. Two yeah. Three, it's 40 million black people in America. Yeah, right. You're going to give everyone two or three million. That's because yeah. like a gazillion. I don't even know what that number would be. Right. It's impossible. Yeah, I can't count I, that high. Yeah, I showed it to him on the calculator. Damn calculator, bro. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, wow. I said, let's say I just give you 1,500 each. And it was like, he said, wow, that's a lot of money. Still like a hundred trillion or something like it's, that. It's, it's something crazy. It's crazy. But they but why do they fall for it? It's like they don't know basic math. Yeah. It's because they're stupid. <laughs> it's emotionalism. It's yeah. yeah. 
It's yeah, trauma and emotionalism. So they say, look, look, this is what we're going to do for you. And they're not counting the cost. They're not thinking. Because black people don't understand finances as much. We don't get financial education. Yeah, our right? high schools, our, our school system sucks. It sucks. Yeah. And especially in the inner city. Just imagine how much, oh. how much that sucks. They they're yeah. not even at grade level reading. Right. What right. do you think in 2024 election? You think Trump's got this? You know, if, if it's honest, they got it. Easy. Yeah. In the bag. I, mean, I don't think it, being pro, I, I don't know a person. I know a lot of people that, mm. I ain't say I know a lot of people. I know of people that voted for Joe Biden. Yeah. My dad included. I, I'm mad at him for doing it. I told him yeah. not to do it. Yeah. I, but I think I, my our sister did. Yeah, I think her sister and her husband did. <laughs> and I don't, but right now, right. Uh-huh. I don't know nobody yeah. that voted for him that, that supported him this time. Yeah. There's people that saying I ain't voting because I'm not voting for him for sure. Right. And then there's people saying I, I don't vote for Trump. The crazy thing about it, man, the things they did it against Trump, man, it's like everybody should be running to the polls and voting for him. Right. Like the, they, they accused him of rape. They found him guilty of that in a civil trial. Then he comes out and denounces that, says, I didn't rape anybody. Oh, you defamed her. Now they sued him again. Right. Now that he just won a $330 million fraud case against him because nobody was defrauded. Nobody was defrauded. He went and got a loan from a bank. They appraised <laughs> his property, right. right? They gave him the loan. He paid back the loan. The State Department in New York, the government said, no, that was fraud. <laughs> <laughs> found him guilty. Yeah. For three, I was like, and and I just saw Charles Barkley yeah. on TV yeah. saying he was going to punch a man, a black person, if he sees them wearing a shirt yeah. from smug we, we should all just, we should all go to Phoenix. You know, he live in Phoenix. He live in Phoenix. We should all go to Phoenix one weekend. I know where, I know where he's smoking cigars. Like we just going to all go in there. <laughs> Somebody got to videotape it. We're going to all go right. in our Trump shirt like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you really, Chuck, right. you, getting, you ain't like it used to be. Yeah. Yeah. You going to get dropped out here. Yeah. I was like, man, how can you be so ridiculous? But the, but you know, he say good stuff sometimes. Yeah. Like, he'll open up about the black community and stuff. But, like, yeah. some people, I don't know why they get in their feelings about Donald Trump. Yeah, they man. in their emotions, man. Yeah. Well, he's the racist, man. Like, a logical black man will get out of character yeah. because of Donald Trump for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. And, and you're right. I mean, how do people not see that this dude getting hosed? Right. How do they not see it? Even Fannie Willis. Mm-hmm. Like, bro, come on. Yeah. She's smashing this dude. Yeah. She got a condo so she could smash this dude because she was living with her daddy. Right. Dad, well, her daddy was living with, with, with her. Mm-hmm. And so she didn't want to smash him at the house because her daddy <laughs> old school. She went and got a condo in somebody else's name and took over the lease. Right. Homeboy had a, 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 a garage to open her, and they swear they ain't hidden. <laughs> and, 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 and then he take on trips on government dime uh-huh. because she set him up to get paid. Mm-hmm. And then she told him she pay him back in cash, no record of it. They lying under oath. Yeah. His attorney, um, Bradley, which was which was Wade's previous divorce attorney who represented him in the case was texting the defense mm-hmm. on that they lying. They started in 20, 20, mm-hmm. uh, 2019. Right. They've been screwing ever since. Mm-hmm. All this other stuff. Yurgen or Yurin or whatever her name is. Right. They own the apartment, snitched on her. Right. Black people got her at the church. Right. She admitted she was asleep with this man. They right. got they she at the church. They let the Lord bless her. No weapon formed against uh, me. You're like, what are I y'all mean, doing? The, stu- the stupidity in black churches oh, is unbelievable. How, how, you know, I'm gonna tell you this. My my pastor, and I love him, a great man. Mm. He's one of the greatest men to ever live, mm. in my opinion. I don't know how he fought for that Democrat stuff. I remember this before I was conservative. I remember we were cleaning the church mm. after the church. All the men, we'll pull the weeds, clean the church. And this was after church, and we sitting in the in the church. I think we had, like, vacuumed or something. So he's sitting on the stairs, and he go, you, you don't know how you want to vote? He just vote Democrat all the way down. Just vote Democrat all the way down. He's serious. <laughs> I'm like, I thought you would, at the That's time. That's what I do. I vote Republican yeah, all the way down. <laughs> down. <laughs> I thought he said Republican. I guess he said Republican wrong. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, like, you know, uh, how is a man that is that honest, and he yeah. has, uh, you know, he's loyal, he, he's in touch with God. I wouldn't, be, I wouldn't yeah. be saved if it wasn't for him. You know right. what I'm saying? Preaching the gospel and standing up strong. He's a yeah. humble man. How does he look at yeah. the Democrat Party pushing abortion and all the stuff that they do and look at it and say, this makes sense? You right. know what? My mama was the same way. My brother, my older brother who's Republican, he used to get into arguments with my mom. Right. I sat down with my brother Timmy. I said, Timmy. Can't teach an old dog. <laughs> <laughs> Let sleeping dogs lie. <laughs> you ain't going to change. Mama was in her 60s at the time. She always wore this yeah. Obama shirt. She, when That's Obama so got funny. elected, she had this white T-shirt Obama. <laughs> as soon as my Republican brother comes home, right, he's in the army, please take that down. <laughs> <laughs> Mama, please. <laughs> Mama wore that shirt every day. Hey, uh, back to the election. 
Is uh, mail-in ballots going to be an issue this time around? Are they going to be allowed? I think they're going to be allowed, but we get we just got to outdo them. What we messed up last time, I think, we messed up in the midterms too. And I told people this. On, I was on a tour. I think I went to like six cities and we were talking to people. They, th they looked at me like I had three heads. Mm -hmm. I said, everybody needs to vote in every way that you can. Right. Grandma and them ain't finna go to the poll and they the forget last the last minute. Right. You know, or something happened to you. You don't know the poll date. You don't know where right. you're supposed to poll. Mail that thing in. Mm -hmm. Right. Do something. Yeah, Democrats mm -hmm. voting like every day for like seven days. We just vote on one, one day. day. What's right. the chance? What's the likelihood, bro, Something's that gonna something's going to happen? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, like I remember one time, a long time ago, and I hate to admit this. I never told anybody this. In 2016, mm -hmm. I couldn't vote in the primary. Now, I didn't say nothing because mm -hmm. I was embarrassed. Right. But I didn't know that Arizona was a closed primary. That means you had to be registered for the party that you could vote for. You can't vote at all. Wow. Mm -hmm. So last minute, right, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm on election day. I show up there, they go, we ain't got your name on the thing. I'm like, well, I'm going to register to vote. I got my voting card right here. Mm -hmm. Well, not, what, what party are you affiliated with? It? Well, I wasn't a Republican, so yeah. I couldn't vote for the Republican, so my name wouldn't even show up in a closed election. Wow. And that's how it is. Arizona is a closed election. I think Texas, I think California is a closed election. They're trying to keep them niggas from voting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so they want to make sure people don't do what like they did with Nikki Haley in Vermont. Right. Where the oh, Democrats just voted for, for, for right, Trump right. instead of right. over Biden because who cares? Yeah. And so, you know, you know, so you wait till the last minute and something like that pop up. My wife, she was helping out in the election just recently, and people were like not doing their signature right and everything like that. And you only got a couple days mm -hmm. to cure those ballots for them to count. And if you do it on election day, your, your window is a lot shorter. Right. And so people were they could they were knocking on the doors, they were missing them. So they mm -hmm. they votes didn't count. Right. So you got a man when, oh, while wow. they hot. You know, if, if, if early election is done, my grandma and them, or my cousin and them, tell mm -hmm. my vote, get them to vote now. Get them to yeah. mail that thing in. Right. Your kids from college, get that thing, mail that thing in. Yeah, you can't wait to last. Me time. and the wife voted early. Mm -hmm. So we, we voted like the day early or two days early. Mm -hmm. Because what happened on election day in Arizona was on election day, the lines are out of control and the machines wouldn't work. Right. That's on election crazy. day. And so people are like giving up, they going home. Yeah. Or you mess around on election day and they call the state. When you're still in the line, that's and, crazy. Which is crazy. Last year, or when Trump, they called Arizona early. Right, yeah, it so is. It's, it's like thousands of people in line ready to vote, and they just turn around and went home because they already called the state. So that's election interference. Yeah. You don't want to end up being that guy that that believes that they called the state, and really Trump could have probably came back if everybody would have stayed in line. Right. Mm -hmm. It's just a projection. It's not 100 percent right. Right. Uh, so you know we got to vote in any way you can. Vote early. Vote by mail. Mm -hmm. Vote in person, encourage everybody to vote. We just gotta outdo them at their own game. They got, right. they got us, man. Yeah. They got us being stupid enough to think just vote on election day. That's the most, and they, they getting, they getting their millions doing everything. It's just like raising money. Yeah. If y'all raise money, you go, you can only donate to us <laughs> in person with a check <laughs> on one day, right? Yeah. Versus you saying, look, PayPal, Venmo, online, yeah. seven days, so you can damn. mail it in. Yeah. Can't give. Hey, yeah, Trump so. said it. We going on election day. That's going to be the day. Yeah. He's one of the supporters of that. I know, which was yeah. stupid. Yeah. It was stupid. But, you know, they they thought it was right, I guess, at the time because it sounded It's cute, more patriotic. Was, hey, that's yeah. how it used to be anyway. But it Trump, ain't smart. You, you, know what, smart you know what really pissed me off about Trump? He go out his way to piss off black folks. <laughs> like Rihanna was at the Super Bowl, right? Yeah, yeah. That was an amazing performance. She's pregnant, <laughs> right? She's like 500 miles. Up I in thought the it was good. It right. was awesome, and she's pregnant. <laughs> Trump went on what's it? True Social, so man. Good. That was the worst performance <laughs> ever. He said ever, ever in history. I'm like, I'm like, Trump. what are you doing? <laughs> it ain't even necessary. And I yeah. love Trump, bro. Yeah, yeah. But like, but I wish that somebody was in his ear. Yeah. Even some of the stuff he said about black people, uh, it, like I know he don't care because he's not a racist, so he don't right. think about what right. he say. Right. Right. But I wish I wish he had a brother there to be like, yeah. oh, no, Trump, Trump, Trump. Dude. Dude, don't say it like that because that ain't gonna go well. <laughs> My blacks. Yeah. yeah. What did he say last time? <laughs> yeah. I see the black ones. Yeah, I can't see the white ones. <laughs> I can't see the white. Ones. I see the black ones. <laughs> it's a lot more black ones than it used to be. I'm like Trump. God <laughs> damn. What are you doing, man? I knew they were gonna go all right. in on it. Yeah. Right. I right. saw it. I say, oh right. dang, it's gonna be a whole. No, we got. I'm gonna have but to defend you, it. But to his defense, that's why we can trust him because he's so genuine. Right. But it hurts him. And yeah, sometimes because of the ignorance. Yeah, the yeah. ignorance. Yeah, yeah. the ignorance. Yeah. They ignorant. Yeah. So when, when he say something like that, they jump on TV. Look, look, he a racist man. He a, yeah. After all the stuff that Trump then did, yeah. that proves that he's not a racist. Right. Yeah. They they gonna throw that out there. But you know, I wish that Trump would would kind of to a certain degree, kind of measure some of the things he say. Yeah. Because I think that it it, it like some black yeah. people are like right there. They yeah. like you know what. 
Yeah. I'm sick of these Democrats. Yeah. Right. I'm finna go vote for them. Yeah. Heck no. Nah. Yeah. Yeah. Then, then, so then you got to defend it. You know yeah, what I right. mean? Hey, like um, when he told the that... football players, when he was the black players, it was the Fonzo sons of bitches. <laughs> <laughs> I said, Trump, you just called black women. <laughs> <laughs> It, it, yeah. it don't mean no, like, it don't yeah. bother me because I, I know understand, what he means. I totally understand what he's defending our country. Right. You know, yeah. you're, you're walking on our flag. Many people, many, man, hundreds of thousands of people died for that flag, and you're going to trash people like that? I yeah. totally right. agree with what he's saying, but it just rubs back like, Let the us way. do it. Yeah. Let us do it. I, if I yeah. could tell Trump, like, Trump, you don't have to say nothing. Like, I got this. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm going to say all the stuff that needs to be said. I'm going right. to call it like it is. You just right. stay in your lane yeah. so you don't. So you can make to the election, yeah. <laughs> you know. So, and then once you're president, I don't care what you say. <laughs> yeah, yeah get, get right. Me. Hey, yeah. but that's why Trump uh, uh, Barker said he would punch anybody wearing that strip because mm -hmm. of what Trump said. What did he yeah. say? He said um, he was just he was comparing the fact that right. black people, people resonate with it with that with the, the black people wearing a mugshot and they right. do that. Were they talking about y'all? <laughs> I don't was, know he talk, he was, was he talking about y'all? He was just talking about anybody that was, he probably he probably saw a shirt or something, but yeah, yeah. yeah he was talking about anybody who wear a mug shirt. I don't think he was oh. calling us out specifically. Yeah, yeah but yeah. you know how black people, black people see things from a racist lens. Oh, oh, so what? All black people are like, yeah. like thugs, and that's yeah, why yeah, we yeah, embrace yeah, it? Because yeah. that's how they that's their mindset. But, Trump doesn't realize that. Yeah, but, mm -hmm. but they also are freaking hypocrites. Yeah. Right. Black people don't glorify. Remember they said black people don't glorify shoes? And right. then and then what what is his mm -hmm. name? DJ Khaled, some one of these dudes right. came yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. No, but Fat Joe. Fat yeah. Joe, Fat Joe yeah. came out with the shoes. Right. It's like, oh yeah, he the biggest dude in the game. What you right. mean? <laughs> right. And then right. They, black people don't glorify uh drug dealing and thugging. Yeah. Every rapper on planet Earth that exactly. they sell out the sell out whole concerts wearing a merch and all this stuff, yeah. they, all they do is promote degeneracy. Yeah, black so, people, man, they hold white people to a higher standard than they hold themselves. Right, right. It's a damn shame. <laughs> <laughs> it's a damn shame. Man, the world is crazy, y'all. World going crazy. Yeah, food prices going up, supply chains breaking down, Biden inflation is making it hard for everyone out here. Biden inflation going to the moon. I can't even afford a damn carton of eggs. That more than ever, Americans need backup. Fish for food. More people than ever are getting ready for a potential food crisis. Yeah. My friends at Heaven's Harvest have put together a damn good deal for y'all. Yeah, hit the link in the description or go to hawkstwinsprep.com and secure all the kinds of emergency food, water, purifiers, organic seeds, and more. Damn, they selling seeds, too. They selling seeds, too, <laughs> Black Joe crops. <laughs> Use promo code HARKTWINS at checkout for an extra discount. These good white people are saving your money and your life. Man, where would we be without white people? Man. That's a, that's a dark place. <laughs> Be Africa. <laughs> With the way the world is, we've been stocking up on all these things, too. We're borderline doomsday preppers now. Yeah. It might seem crazy to talk about needing emergency food, but it's crazy times we're living in. You'd rather have it, not need it. Yeah. That need it, not have it at all. Yeah, so yeah. don't wait until it's too late. Go to hardtwinsprep.com and get prepared today. I like that quote, man. You know a white man wrote that. You'd rather have it and not need it they need it and not have it. Only person that came over that was a white man. Had to be. White people making America great again. <laughs> Horse Twins Prep. Dot com. Yeah. I get tired. I'm on. I be on the radio. I get so sick of it, and I be talking about. I, yeah, I they, know be black calling, they be calling. They be calling. I'm a coon Uncle Tom sellout, yeah. boot liquor. That's cause they don't have nothing else. They to ain't say. got nothing. To, they mad though, but I I can't. Stop telling the truth, bro. Black people just be cutting up, man. Every time it, I was on the radio the other day, and it was a crime committed, and, mm -hmm. and you didn't know what race it was. Mm -hmm. I said, I, I, I put, I put my job on it. They black. <laughs> this black people stuff. I said, man, look yeah. it up. Right. What, do, what do you know? Black right. woman and somebody. It was some shooting that somebody did in the store or something. Right. And I'm like, it's only black people do this stuff. How do I know the, the race of these people? It's yeah. because it's what black people consistently do. And then I made a mention, and I, and I feel bad by saying, but I like, I really believe this. Mm -hmm. I know why white people are sick of black people. I could only imagine, bro. They, yeah. You yeah. think about this. You look at the country, mm -hmm. look at all the stuff white people didn't done for this country. If mm -hmm. they just go off their history, the Civil War, hundreds of thousands yeah. of white people, white people died. died. Mm -hmm. Who gave black people freedom? White, pe good white people. Mm -hmm. Who helped Harriet Tubman help you know the Underground Railroad to get black people to, to the North? Mm -hmm. Good white people. So white people has done all that have done all of these things in history. They see all of these black people being successful, equal opportunity. The reparations has already occurred with, mm -hmm. with them giving uh, um, affirmative action and all. They already gave black people reparations on so many Welfare. levels. <laughs> Welfare and all this stuff. And then 2024, mm -hmm. black people still complaining. 
we can't never make it nowhere because the white man is and, and white people got to be like, I'm sick of these here. I, I, have you ever looked on Instagram, TikTok, where you seen black people acting up? Read those comments. <laughs> <laughs> I know every white person feels because <laughs> it's the truth. It, it's the it, truth. You don't see no other group of people acting like this. They don't. No, they yeah. don't white, it's no white Chicago. Yeah. Where, they, where they are doing? Hey, what's that argument? They say, oh, oh, black people commit a uh, majority of violent crimes. He said, no, black people kill black people, white people kill white people. I was like, that's all a left wing talking point. You will never see an age in Chicago. You will never yeah. see. You they, never. They do because of proximity, right? Yeah. Most mm-hmm. people live around it, but the percentage, yeah, the mm-hmm. per capita, mm-hmm. yeah, the sheer numbers, yeah, black people overwhelmingly kill each other more than any other race, right? And, and, they, and they're far above any minority race. Right. I think whites are probably around 80%, you know, 70, 80%. Black people are like 96%. Right. And then black people kill white people twice as much as white people to kill black people. Yeah. They don't want to talk about FBI statistics. You can go look it up right now. So mm-hmm. they don't want to talk about stuff like that. But, it, it, you know, black people got to stop being hypocritical. And, and I think it starts with people like you and I. You know, we raise our kids. In America, our kids are going to be considered black. Hey, tell us about your Blexit movement. Oh, Blexit, you know, Blexit is... <clears throat> We started, me and Candace started in 2018 mm-hmm. with just yeah. the idea of what we talking about. How, yeah. how do we get the messaging out there? Because yeah. you ain't finna just go in the black community and bludgeon people into, into believing this stuff. <laughs> we like, we gotta, we gotta educate people. We gotta get into the communities and do, and do community service, right? Mm-hmm. We didn't just go in there and be like, hey, get off the plantation. Mm-hmm. We really, we had people that from the community, we recruit people in the communities and then they do back to school drives and stuff and we sponsor and they have volunteers in the community mm-hmm. doing community work. And then we'll have our little pop-up events where people will come. I'll tell you this, very successful, I think, in the messaging, but it was very unfortunate because some of our major events, it was number of white people showing up. And, it, and it, it, it bothers me because black folks claim they want information and they're open-minded and they, we, we in the community helping and we recruiting and then when it's time to hear a message, they, they, they don't want to show up. They probably watching mm-hmm. football and doing all this other stuff instead right. of being educated. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was disappointing initially, but then we, we start to see more and more black people starting to participate. Yeah. And now, you know, we're, we're, we have chapters in, in, I think we are in all 50 states. And so oh. we, we're making some moves, but it's hard, bro. It's yeah. hard, bro. Yes. I wish I could get on here and tell y'all this great success story yeah. of like, man, we didn't train every black person. Yeah. We, go to New, we go to New York, we go to the Bronx. It's 400 black people in there. Right. It's, 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 it's hard, man. It's 50 people in there. 50 <laughs> people in there. and it, it, You got 500 seats, four, 480 people white. White. <laughs> you got 20 niggas. Yeah. White looking to help. <laughs> what can we do? Yeah. Black people ain't doing nothing. You're like, you're like we, white people, we get it. Yeah. But y'all, y'all love black people more than black people do. Right. When I do events and do stuff, try to do stuff in the black community, mm-hmm. it's hard to get black people to support that. Yeah. White people are at the drop of a dime. They didn't feel it. We, we had... 400 black leaders at the at the White House in 2018. Mm-hmm. I, th- I don't know if you guys were invited. I mean, we didn't know you guys at that time. Man, we had I don't fo- know why I want that. I felt like, I was like, man, I ain't a big enough Uncle Tom to be in the White House. <laughs> <laughs> like, damn. I, think I still just haven't met Trump yet. You haven't met Trump? I haven't I have met, Trump. met Trump. I man, haven't did, met him. Did y'all, did y'all go to UFC Nick fights? Nick Fuentes, the white supremacist. You met, met him before y'all. <laughs> he yeah. met Trump. Did y'all go to UFC fights? Uh, we're about I've been to. invited a couple times. This house. I would say maybe yeah, that's why I, I met Trump twice there. Oh, okay. For the first time, because I was at the White House, mm-hmm. and you know, I, I didn't, I, I didn't want to put do people like this. Right, right. right. That was crazy, Trump. right? Yeah, yeah. I want to do that, man. I'm, the, I'm like, I'm gonna see him at some point. These young kids ain't never had a chance, never been on an airplane before. Right. Yeah. I let them meet Trump, but you know, I forget, I forget what I was talking about. Meeting Trump. What, what, what were we talking about? Shit, I forgot. I got, <laughs> I, know, yeah. I got, I got Biden brain. Right I know, man. <laughs> I'm sitting around my mouth and jumped off topic. Talking yeah, about, we were talking about meeting Trump and we were talking about Blexit. Oh yeah, Blexit. Yeah. We were talking mm-hmm. about Blexit. Mm-hmm. So you know, we, when we uh, orchestrated that event, we you know we had to raise money, right? And we you know the pitch was we had to go to fundraisers and pitch and say, look, we we want to get 400 black leaders to the White House. We wanted to cover them. You know, we didn't get them flights if they can't afford it, mm-hmm. and you know the hotel. All that is going to cost like $1,000 per person. We got four hundred, So we had to raise $400,000. Man, that's a lot of money. 90%. I mean, right off the rip, mm-hmm. white dude. I, I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. We had to do a couple fundraiser opportunities, and then we had it all paid. We probably had one black donor. Wow. Where Out can of, people go to go support your um, Blexit? 
so you can go to Turning Point USA because we merged with Turning Point USA, and okay. so now we do it together. Okay. And, and, the, and the, the truth be told, it was very hard financially for me and Candace to kind of keep that thing going. And so partnering with Turning Point was probably the greatest thing that we could do. I need so some of that white privilege. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah it, was, it was. You know, that's it, so it was, disheartening. It was to hear. difficult. It was yeah. difficult for because, well, one reason because. They have a crazy infrastructure. Right. And we were just, me and Candace. And, you know, we got our own lives. We got kids and trying right. to keep it's, that it's thing going. And if you think you finna go to black people to do it, yeah, yeah. it's just, it, unfortunately, they, it's not gonna, they're not going to respond. Right it, black celebrities, they talk a big game, but they're not going to put no money into that. They'll yeah. put money in Black Lives Matter, but yeah. not the stuff that we're doing. So when we when we did the, the merger, it, it, it has accelerated. Um, Blexit to a, to a really good level. That's Every good. it's sustainable. We keep all our uh, volunteers and our employees and stuff. We were able to retain everybody, mm -hmm. and so it's moving along. It's doing great, and we still yeah. do events for. Them. Yeah, I think the only thing that's going to save uh, black people is, con is uh, conservatism. That's 100%. the only way. Rock Liberalism violent. is just it's going to victimize you. It's not going to put you at your best. Only way you're going to be successful if you're black in this country, you got to take. Well, you got to take a conservative model. Yeah, and is it is it the ebb and flow method? Like I, I wonder, mm -hmm. is it gonna, is it, or is the pendulum pendulum going to swing back? Because yeah. it's like every generation you see it go so far and then it comes back. You know, yeah. there's a young young girl. I, I think I forget her name. Uh, I, I think her name here in a minute. She was just on my show talking about a book that she she mm -hmm. wrote about how Gen Z is forming up to be one of the most conservative generations. Mm -hmm. And so it's kind of like it swing one way and it swing back. You know, in, in history. In the in the twenties, thirties, and forties, black people were far more conservative. Right, they were Republicans and stuff like that. And then you see it swing to the sixties, and now hopefully the pendulum begin to swing back in the other direction. We see the growth. Mm -hmm. I'm just hoping that it does. You, mm -hmm. the thing that changes people is rock bottom. Mm -hmm. When you, and this is rock bottom for black people, especially in the inner cities. This is rock bottom. The Mexicans coming over there and they taking over everything. They got them. Mm -hmm. They making y'all go home and they put them up in the schools. Mm -hmm. They giving them money. They taking their school. They taking their school. They giving them money. Yeah. These people out here hungry. They struggling. Got three jobs. They the Mexicans coming over with a cell phone. <laughs> yeah. They got debit cards and stuff. They can't yeah. speak. They ain't doing nothing. They committing crimes. They get let out. Exactly. They was they was promising y'all reparations. Well, they was at least talking about it. Now they they yeah. didn't follow through. Now you yeah. got all these people who's not even citizens taking your resources. Yeah, yeah. and they, and they force out the low skilled workers. So now, if you are a black a young black guy mm -hmm. who didn't come from a lot of wealth and success and you know, probably did okay in school, didn't get a scholarship to college. Mm -hmm. Colleges really ain't their thing. Mm -hmm. You got to go into skilled labor. I mean, these people are coming over here and, and low-skilled labor, they're competing. Mm -hmm. And they're going to out-compete you every time because they're not entitled like an American. Right. In America, I got rights. I need minimum wage. Yeah. I, knew, I need three breaks. Right. I need time off. Yeah. Mexicans ain't thinking about no time off. Yeah. Right. I, see, I swear, God is my witness, man. They be everywhere in America. Mm -hmm. They build in houses. They used yeah. to be black folks. Yeah. yeah. Everywhere in America, they build a house. Down the street, <laughs> this dude built a whole garage set up, and he gonna make it into like a little club in his in his in his backyard. Mm -hmm. Them Mexicans out there working all night long. Yeah. They got the music playing. You hear that? Dun -dun 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 -dun. <laughs> and then you like they out there working, and and I, I can't hate on them. Yeah. Get get it in. I remember this black comedian earthquake. He had this joke about Mexican workers. <laughs> he said, "Man, y'all need to calm down. They don't pay by the house. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> they pay by the hour." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> A different that. mindset. Yeah. And that resonated with me so well because you have to hand it to these people coming to this country, man. man they are hard workers. They got the right mindset. Black community, y'all don't have the right spa, mindset. Spar, man. We spar. That's like a kid in the household and they get entitled. Yeah. You owe me something. Well, you owe me something. Then the kid that you get adopted into the household, they just thankful they got it. They got somewhere to live mm -hmm. and they got some freedoms. Yeah. And then these people come over here and just dominate us, man. They 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 work harder. They're they they're smarter with their money. In my grandma's street used to be all black. Whole street on yeah. Pate Drive used to be all black in, right. in Eastwood, Texas. I got Eastwood on my, I was claiming the hood when I was young. <laughs> but bro, now, yeah. <laughs> them Mexicans then took over the whole block. <laughs> yeah. And they started with one house. Yeah. It was like all the, they built the, cause. And you, you know, know they, what about uh, Mexican families? Their families are so close. Yeah, yeah. Their mother, fathers, there's, everybody's so close. Yeah. Black people. No, it's no comparison. Because like if a, if a Mexican family, and not it's not all Mexicans, you know, I mm -hmm. hope people understand that yeah. we're thinking generally, right, not right. every single person falling in this category. Yeah, right. But like Mexican people, I feel like they start out, they help each other, they go live with mm -hmm. each other. Families combine their right. income and then they build, they build. Right. Black folks will be struggling by themselves. Right. 
They won't go live with their uncle, the auntie, and them. They ain't invited. They got they, they want their own space. They struggling. Single mama struggling. She should be living with her parents. Right. She should be in there getting some male influence for her younger ch- her younger boys. Yeah. But instead, they want to be independent. I'm on my own, and I don't need a man. I don't need a man. I don't, my mom and them. I'm out here. <laughs> you know, you're like, no, nah, y'all. Maybe you do need your mom and them. Maybe you should live around your parents. Maybe you do need a little bit more guidance. Maybe y'all should be stacking y'all money together. You go work, they work, you stack money, y'all buy a house as a family. Yeah. And then you yeah, rent Latinos that house. Latinos do that all the time. All the time. And the Mexicans that was right in, across the street from my grandma, mm-hmm. that you, they, I think it's the same family. They mm-hmm. went and got like three houses. They started right. with five cars in the, in the driveway. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like 16 hey, people live in there. Yeah. I think people are sleeping outside. They all in that same <laughs> house. I, bet time I, went, I ain't going to say who they were, man. I'd be going in Mexican houses, man. They laying across the, uh, <laughs> the room like sardines. <laughs> <laughs> they got them packed in there. Packed in there. <laughs> like, and they close, though. They, they close. close. They yeah. close. Yeah. It, just like, uh, I mean, other, other, other races do the same thing. Yeah. They yeah. live together. They coordinate things together. Mm-hmm. They build together. Yeah, everybody but, be black people. But black Mexicans, people, man. man, they take it to a new level, man. You see a Mexican pull up to a fast food restaurant, it about 50 people get out that car. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> everybody <laughs> eating. Right, right, yeah. right. Hey, you got any projects coming up for the uh, 2024 election? No, I mean, I just do my radio show, man, every day, three hours yeah. a day, man. It's, it's insane. That's got to be a lot of... That's, it's a it's that's, a lot of work, bro. Yeah. Talking for three hours every single day. Plus, I do my YouTube by yourself video by myself. I don't even have guests on there a lot of time because you know it, the coordinated get, guests is a is a structure in and of itself. Because I got right. it got to be somebody I want to talk to. Mm-hmm. Then it's got to be some I gotta you know get some talking points. That together. is a skill that a lot of people not born with. Like no. I have my brother. If I look, look at you and you, I said, man, this dude doing three hours <laughs> by himself. Dude, that, I know no. you feel lonely as hell, bro. Three hours by myself <laughs> on the radio. And yeah. then I do two or three videos a day on my YouTube channel. Yeah. And then I got the the TikTok that I do. Mm-hmm. And then yeah, I came across your TikTok. Yeah, we got the little Tatum Plus stuff that we mm-hmm. we just launched, which is like the subscription thing. Mm-hmm. And so I got Love and Black and White, which is my wife and I and my podcast. Mm-hmm. So we talk about relationship stuff. Then I got Cigar Lounge on top of that. Mm-hmm. And then I oh, travel. Oh, I didn't know about that. Yeah, you and your wife? Yeah, yeah. We we just started it, man. We trying to get our look right because. Mm-hmm. We've been trying different locations. The lighting wasn't right. You know how went, went, my wife is. She's like, I, oh, I'm man. hideous on here. And I'm yeah. like, man, oh, yeah. man. My Maybe that's what way. you look like. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> nah, but, hey, hey so, where can everybody find you? Yeah. Uh, OfficerTatum.com. I mean, Officer what did I say? OfficerTatum.com. Just put in the Officer Tatum in the Google okay. or go duck, duck, go or whatever. You can find every single platform that I'm on. So whatever platform that people use, mm-hmm. they can go on there and they can find me on there. My store, uh, Tatum Store, mm-hmm. is one of one of the things that we take pride in. TatumStore.com? TatumStore.com. Okay. And then we got all our merch there, too. And that's mm-hmm. a good way to support me. Okay. Yeah. okay. Well, man, this has been a great conversation. Yeah. It was great finally meeting you. Yeah, yeah. Because when we decided to come out the closet as conservative, <laughs> yeah. you, Candace, was our motivation. Because we was like, man, I don't know if we should do this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, be- what the hell happened to Amazing Lucas? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> That's a whole nother show. The homeboy <laughs> that lost his mind. Man. I used to watch him. Me too. Yeah. Me too. We were fr- we were friends. Yeah. We were all y'all, friends. Y'all don't talk to him no more? No, no he crazy, <laughs> bro. I look at his channel now and every his most popular videos and we right. talking trash about me. Yeah, he trashes you a lot. <laughs> That's the that's only time to get views, bro. Right. Put my name right. in the algorithm, you know? Yeah. I can't believe it, bro. We That dude... We were cool, man. Right. right. Yeah. He used to be conservative. He bro, was the guy to watch. Bro, he was the dude to watch in the black conservative right. movement. Right. He had 400,000. I never forget. He had 490,000 subscribers. Right. Getting all yeah. kinds of views. Everybody yeah. was like, I was I was like, what is he doing? How is he doing his intros, bro? We used right. to talk. I used to look at his tags. Yeah. And he was the man. Yeah. Right. Bro, right. And, and, and I forget who he said something crazy about. He just went off the deep end. Bro lost like 80,000 subscribers. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and now he, he get like, 10,000 views a video and just bashing yeah. conservatives. I, I don't know, bro. It's but like really weird how that happened. I don't know. I like, don't know if these people ain't, they weren't ever conservative to start with. Yeah. There's a lot of grifters in the Republican it's a, movement. Bro, it's a but ton. He, among he black sounded people. conservative. Huh. Yeah. yeah. Maybe he you was. Know? He just, you know, he, he, got he just that, had a change he got of that heart. beta energy. I know he's taking steroids, some got his, I ain't say he is, but yeah. he could be. Got his emotions all messed yeah. up. Yeah. He got offended. See, because sometimes, mm. y'all probably experienced this. Mm. You say something, mm. And you get a lot of backlash, and it make mm. you mad. You're like, what? Well, yeah. Y'all talking to me right. like that? Right. I'm unfollowing you. You ain't who I thought you were. You know, yeah. it kind of right. be like, man. Yeah, I, I see those comments. That make me want to do more videos. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. but but people that ain't built like that, they mm-hmm. see that and they get defensive and they get mad and they want to quit yeah. and they want to cry and then they want conservatives are mean to me. Yeah. <laughs> and and then the dude turned to a flaming liberal. 
He not yeah. even just a liberal, bro. He crazy. He, he, he insane. <laughs> he's liberal, Lucas. In a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, the he amazing liberal him. Lucas. Yeah. Yeah, it went from amazing Lucas to liberal Lucas. <laughs> liberal Lucas. Yeah. So yeah, and then he ain't the only one. And I was, you know, maybe maybe we'll do another episode and talk about this. But bro, there's a lot of grifters in general in the Republican Party in the yeah. conservative movement. It's, it's a, a money grab. It's a lot of black ones, bro. Because yeah. when we came out, mm -hmm. it wasn't popular. It mm -hmm. wasn't no money to be made in this stuff. Right, we were yeah. just coming out and getting bashed every day. Mm -hmm. But then people start seeing success, and then they just jump on the bandwagon. I, and they do I it for a little that. bit. They make yeah. a little money. I'm amazed at how many black conservatives you see on YouTube now. Oh, yes, yeah. ton of them. I think yeah. most of them are genuine. But you, yeah. you got the ones that's on that just fake. Mm -hmm. you know, and, and even even the ones that ain't black, they just fake, bro. Right. Y'all, I don't know how often y'all travel and go to these major events, bro. But these people ain't. Well, I'd have met some fake oh people. Oh my God. They not who you think they are. It's like yeah. your I wanted to punch this person at the White House. <laughs> oh my I'm goodness. not gonna tell you his name. <laughs> I wanted to strangle that little <laughs> I think it's I some, so many fake people in the country. I'm trying to think of who it is. Is he dark skinned? I wouldn't say dark skinned. Oh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I'm gonna give him away if I For argument's sake, let's say it's light skinned. Light skinned. Man. I already know who it is now. Ain't yeah. too many light skinned black boys. Black boys. <laughs> Yeah, it's only like two of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the one you want to fight is the third one. Right, yeah, right. <laughs> nah, I'm, just I'm just kidding. Yeah, but yeah, man, I appreciate you guys having me mm -hmm. on, man. Good to yeah. see y'all in person, man. We watch y'all stuff all the time, dude. My, yeah. Uh, yeah. My video guy, Nick, mm -hmm, I mean, yeah. he just laugh at y'all every day. Oh, yeah. yeah. Laugh at y'all every day. Yeah, we, be getting, we could be getting crazy. When, when y'all was saying uh, gay paraphernalia on yeah. that one video, <laughs> you said, that's a bunch of gay paraphernalia. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, he, I was on the radio and he was watching that. Bro, right. he's laughing yeah. and, and choking and gagging while I'm on the radio. And I'm oh, like, yeah. bro, you got to stop laughing. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Gay paraphernalia. Yeah. So, nah, yeah. but I appreciate you guys. I appreciate, appreciate you too, brother. Yeah, thank you.